Hey everyone, we're live finally. Um, today, we have a couple guests and we're doing something fancy and new. We are stepping briefly out of Barovia to go to the wonderful land of Andaran, where the time of Easter is upon us. And for the next two to three game sessions, we will be exploring the adventures of the Rabbits of Isitar, a mercenary band operating out of the country, which I did not invent this morning, called Korth. Um, let me make sure everyone is on the map. <coughs> okay. So, Korth is this country here. Um, it's kind of a, a, a modest country. Not overly powerful politically. Not overly rich. But uh, at peace. It stands between the Empire of Saragarda to the south, the Empire of Aurelia to the north, and the empire of Kepri to the northwest. Um, now, Korth is allied with all of these countries. And you guys, the rabbits of Isitar, are in a little city about here. Uh, actually, why don't I draw a little mark for you? Little city about there. Hmm. It's right on the coast. It is a trade city, and it is also unnamed because I'm an idiot and I forgot to name the city. Whoops. Oh, wait. I did name it. Where is it? I know I named this city. Oh, derp. The city is Isitar. <laughs> uh, you'd think I'd remember that. Uh, so you are in the city of Isitar. It is a beautiful, red brick-roofed port city with its own naval armada. It has an outer wall manned with cannons as well as catapults. Um, and kind of a bustling trade about it. And so the rabbits get a lot of clients from Aurelia and from Kepri and from Saragarda, as well as, of course, their own country. So... Um, before we get into today's clients and the mercenary mission you'll be undergoing, let's take a second to introduce each of your characters, because you are the primary rabbits of Isitar. So, uh, let's start with Jesse. Would you tell us who you are and a little bit about yourself? Ta-da! <laughs> That's Jesse. <laughs> You're muted. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was like, um, uh, any minute now. <laughs> um, my dog was barking, so I d muted. Okay, so anyways, uh, my character's name is Clara, and um, she is a... Am I a Risen? Or did mm -hmm. we... Mm -hmm. Okay, so she is a Risen, which is basically a homebrew form of a Revenant, as far as what I'm aware. Sort of an undead with a soul. Right, like that. She's a cleric to the sort of arcane god um, uh, by many names. Amon, Yuri, Cain, and among others. Uh... Okay. What else? Anything else? Or oh, she's a middle-aged woman. I would say she's got uh, like some dirty glasses. Say like short blonde hair, kind of curly. Would you describe her as overly bony? No. Uh, she yes. Uh, she, as yes, I, I would. Skeleton? <laughs> she's a uh, slightly <laughs> skeletal <laughs> in uh, slightly or stature. <laughs> I leave that to your imagination, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> She's undead. Okay. And 
Uh, she is a skeleton form of Risen, as there are different types, like vampire, ghost, and such. So, uh, if anyone wonders why spear spears don't uh, work so well on her, that'll be why. Um, all right. So there's your arcane cleric. Bijan, would you tell us a little about who you are? Oh, well, my name is Eric. And if anyone knows, I just named him because of Eric the Viking. Great movie. Uh, but anyways, uh, I'm a dwarf barbarian. And basically, I don't know if this was a tease at me because this is not my normal style. I'm like a chaotic, chaotic neutral guy. But if I'm not fighting, apparently, from the, what I'm reading, I'm fucking. So <laughs> <laughs> apparently I want to like have kids with every woman out there. Uh, Unfortunate, <laughs> given how many women you are currently working with. That's Actually, a problem yeah. We, yeah. we've gotten used to. Don't worry. You guys will all have my baby by the end of this. No, <laughs> just that, that's weird. Okay. All right. Well, anyway. Anyways. Um, yeah, and I, I just like to fight. I try to be... And actually, from the looks of this, I'm pretty intelligent, too. I'm, I'm not stupid, but I'm not like your dumb barbarian. I'm very tactful, it looks like. Um, Got to know how to pillage. Yeah, that's true. But, uh... Yeah, um, that's me, basically. Okay. And I'll try to do the Viking accent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one note about your character. Uh, mm -hmm. You hail from the country of Himnheim, which is up here in the frozen mountainous north, uh, probably from the the dwarven citadel of Kaldheim. Uh, did you put, like, up here? Mm -hmm. the, well, the, the White Star is Kaldheim, but you could also be from... Um, you said Himnaheim. Or well, Himnaheim is the name of the country. Kaldheim is the city. Oh, okay. Um, but just looking at that, all the mountains, the ice and snow, it's a pretty inhospitable country. You'd be accustomed oh, like to it. rugged living, frozen temperatures, dragons, you know. Basically, I'm back home, right? In Michigan. <laughs> yeah, just like Michigan. Um, okay. So, Shannon, would you tell us a bit about your character? My character, her name is Sophia. She hails from a city or a place I don't remember the name of. Andalon. 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 Um, she is a former pirate in her 30s who uh, has joined the rabbits because she thought it'd be fun. I mean, what better reason is there? Right. Okay. Uh, and you said you're a former pirate. Correct. How does that uh, translate into class? I am a swashbuckler. Oh, okay. A Wonderful. swashbuckler. And uh, what, what race did you say you are? Just human. Tiefling. Oh, no, you're right. I'm a tiefling. I totally forgot. <laughs> Easy I'm to tiefling. forget these horns. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you put the right hat on it, nobody's going to notice the horns. True. Well, it also depends on how big they are. I haven't decided yet, but... That's true. Okay. Um, purple. And that says everything I think we need to know about both your character and Andalon, for that matter. Andalon, definitely not Italy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ashley, would you tell us a bit about your character? Uh, I'll be playing um, Elise. She is a uh, dreamborn. So I don't want to say she's like a... It's like a mermaid on land, I guess. Um, kind of a human mermaid crossbreed. Yeah. No, no uh, fins or anything, but she does have fair skin with patches of uh, bronze scales. Hmm. And I guess her e her ears have a bit of uh, finage on them. Uh, her hair is wow, really silly. Mm -hmm. It is aquamarine in a long single uh, in a long braid that probably goes down to her butt. Um, her eyes are a bright gold. Um, she is. We've been traveling together a while, so I suppose you know she is a druid. Um, 
But she's also an assassin. So... Like, what kind of assassin? Like a spy, hired killer kind of assassin? Um, she's ex-special forces from Corvania, right? Yes, yes. Corvania, our intrepid chat, is right here, neighboring Andalon. They are a very honorable and proud people with spies and assassins. But she was not born in Corvania. <laughs> Okay. Uh, she came there at a later point in her life. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. Um, a couple notes about the Dreamborn. The Dreamborn, while being aquatic, are also... Uh, they have a more pure soul than most living creatures, and as such, they are able to kind of link their soul to another to transfer pain back and forth. She can take someone else's injury onto herself, or give someone one of her injuries. Hmm. I will say, in the special forces she was in, she was most likely kind of a the medic of the group, probably. Of her squad, I would say. Okay. And Alvin, that brings us to you. Tell us a little about yourself. My character is John Jacob Jeremiah. He's from the country of... I forgot to put that in my notes that I was making. Capri. What? Capri. He's a uh, traveling researcher, cataloging human cultures. That's why he has such a human name, John Jacob Jeremiah. Definitely and human. That's what I say. Um, and what uh, what sort of profession are you in? He's in the arcane profession. Devils a little bit in futures and numbers. Oh, okay. But usually this is a bit of a magic, magic magical kind of person. Okay. But uh, not no funny business about that, right? It's just, just wizardry. As far as I'm aware. Okay. Just making sure, because you know what they say praise, about Kepri. Praise the Queen Mother. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> that is what they say. Okay. So you guys together make up the Rabbits of Isatar. Your uh, the captain, so to speak, doesn't usually go on missions with you. He's more of He's less of a battlefield captain, more of a manager. He has the contacts, he hooks you up with the jobs, and in exchange he gets a cut, a, a very large cut of the money. Um, his name being Zut Herrick, a Caprian and a former queen guard. Um, so, along with him, you guys are stationed... Well, you have... I shouldn't say stationed. You have a headquarters in Isatar. And today, you've all been called together because he says a group of clients have come in with a pretty big job and it promises to be lucrative. So you all find yourselves kind of gathered in the conference room and Zoot is in there as well. And you can see that with him, kind of standing at the front of the, the conference room, is an Aurelian gentleman who's tall, very properly dressed, wearing uh, expensive finery that you've come to recognize as a noble. Um, he has spectacles, and you can see that he's under his, his coat. He has sort of a secondary, like a vest, like a combat vest with a lot of uh, tools and bottles and chemicals and the like in it. Though he doesn't show any signs of uh, turning to these. With him, uh, seated in the conference room, kind of off to themselves, uh, are three Keprians. Um, all three of them look like common folk. They're in kind of worn uh, peasantry, or peasants tunics and trousers. They look like they might be farmers or loggers or something to that effect. 
Um, when you each enter this conference room, they're all speaking quietly amongst themselves in their native tongue. Uh, I don't know. Well, do any of you speak Caprian? I do not. Wouldn't I? Yes, I know you do. I don't think anyone else speaks it. Nope. Okay. So, um, John, Jacob, Jeremiah, That's you, my name. uh, <laughs> you can hear that they're quietly talking, um, <laughs> mentioning something about the spring stones and the spring breeding. But the, uh, once the last of you is in and seated, Zoot stands up and grimly um, kind of hammers his, his gavel a little bit. All right, quiet down. These are our new clients. Speaking for them in the common tongue, since they do not speak it, S Sebastian Belford. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, hello. It is a pleasure to meet all of you today. You are all looking in just the very picture of fine health. Uh, as Mr. Herrick has said, I am Sebastian Belford. Uh, and he kind of blinks a little under the uh, stares at him. Um, yes, well... Uh, as Mr. Herrick has said, I speak for my three clients, who have um, propositioned me as something of a spokesperson for them. Uh, the situation is... Well, you see, perhaps I should start at the beginning. In southern Caprian culture, perhaps you are aware that there is a practice of every spring gathering together a trio of magical artifacts known as the Spring Stones. No? No. Well. No, not at all. I am to understand it that it is of great cultural importance to the Caprians. And this uh, group of villagers has come to me to inform me that these three spring stones have been stolen from their village. Now, normally the Queen Guard would see to this matter, and it would be dealt from within. But... Uh, it has been some weeks now, and no sign of the spring stones has turned up. It has had all of our experts baffled, really, and that is where I come into the picture. Because you see, I have procured a letter written by one, uh, we believe him to be the wizard Caraptus. And uh, well, perhaps I should read to you the letter. You'll have to forgive him. He is quite enigmatic, but... <clears throat> and he unfurls a scroll of parchment. Search ye far, or search ye near. You'll find no trace of the three, unless you follow instructions clear, for the spring stones abide with me. North past forest, farm and furrow, you must go to the feathered mound. Then down, away from the sun, you'll burrow. Forget life, forget light, forget sound. To rescue waved, you must do battle with the beast in the boiling bubble. Crossed cavern vast, where chain links rattle, lies lined, past water spouts double. Blue spotted, yet remains to be won, underneath inverted ziggurat. That garnered, think not that you've done, for now you'll find you are caught. I care not, former breeders brave, what heroes you seek to hire, though mighty, I'll make each one my slave, or send him to the fire. And it is signed Caraptus. Now, you must understand, we had been under the impression up till now that Caraptus has been dead these long years. So the Queen Mother is taking this quite seriously. Uh, of, of course you know of the wizard Caraptus. Uh, Never don't. heard of him. Don't know. A history lesson, please. Very well. The wizard Caraptus came about um, 
perhaps 400 years ago. He was uh, like a calamity unto the people of northern Capri. At the time, Capri extended farther, you see, into what is today Aurelia. He saw himself as something of a ruler, or a ruler to be, and he claimed that place as his own. He enslaved the locals, forced them to uh, serve him, and eventually, when his taxes came to be too much and he demanded uh, a sacrifice of the firstborn child of every family, the people rose up against him, and uh, that is where he disappeared. It was assumed that he has died, but uh, this letter has been authenticated by the latest of methods. It is real. And so that brings us to the moment now. This dreadful wizard has taken an important cultural relic, three relics, if you will, from the people of Southern Capri. The queen has authorized me to pay you a sum of 35,000 gold bass if you will uh, return all three of the relics, the spring stones. Um, for your benefit, 35,000 gold would more or less be enough to buy you a castle. Yeah. <laughs> is, um, is there a bonus for killing this wizard? No, but uh, it would certainly be future-proofing, wouldn't it? The future is unstable. A man like Caraptus is dangerous. That he has survived this long, it's uh, rather unheard of. Wizards don't usually uh, pose long-term problems. They have a f habit of, of weeding themselves out. That this one is still around is troubling. I would say that if you have the opportunity to end him, you should take that opportunity. But if that opportunity is not obvious, I would do my best to avoid him entirely. He is undoubtedly dangerous. Yes, and I don't kill for free, so if there is no payment, he will live. Very good. Now, the three relics. They each have a manner of arcane powers, and while the return of these relics is all important, you are authorized to utilize their powers in the acquisition of the others. That is to say, while you are in their pursuit, you may use them until they have been returned to my clients. And what, um, what powers do they have? Each one is different. It is said that the lined springstone has some powers over uh, earth, and that it is responsive to only certain phrases and commands. To be honest, I do not know much about them, and the Caprians seem hesitant to speak of their capabilities fully. The waved, as its name may indicate, has some powers over water. And, of course, the polka-dotted one, well, it is, it is said that it is capable of some kind of conjuration. Really, anything goes. As long as you don't break them and you return them unharmed and complete, you are welcome to experiment with them. I'm sorry, what did you say that the lined ones did again? The, it would seem that the lined ones have some power over the earth, I believe. Ah. Interesting. And, uh... One, one more question. Could we copy or have the letter? I have put that in your journal. Um, if you scroll down to the handout section, it's labeled that Mysterious Note. That was in character. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you knew. Okay. <laughs> well, just, just, just so you know, you can find it there. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I have taken the liberty of making uh, five transcriptions. And cool. he gestures, and on the table, there are a number of folders kind of laid out in front of you. And flipping them open, you find there's some background notes on the wizard Caraptus, which I will also make available for you. Um, mm. There is also a sketch in each one depicting a mountain with a plume of smoke above it. And it's surrounded by 
uh, jagged, rugged uh, badlands. And when he sees you starting to get to the picture, he says, Ah, yes, uh, the latest Aurelian historians have come to believe that the mound so referred to in the letter may in fact be White Plume Mountain, a location that lies in Western Aurelia. So you're suggesting we start there? Quite so. Horses will be provided for you, of course, and I've been authorized a down payment of 500 gold boss. How many women do we get? I beg your pardon? Ignore uh, him. Ignore women. him now. How many women do we get? Um, forgive me, but the Queen Mother has not authorized the payment of women. However, with your portion of the gold boss, you should be able to procure whatever needs you have. Now, what if we only find two out of the three? Still, like, discounted? Yeah. Still get some money for that. Allow me one moment. And he turns to his clients, and in perfect Caprian, so, Alvin, you're the only one who understands, or I should say John, Jacob, Jeremiah. <laughs> he says, um, what should I tell them if they can only provide one or two? And the Caprians, all three of them, visibly shake their heads. I see. That needs no translating. <laughs> In common, he says, um, it had best be three, or the down payment is all you shall receive. Well, I guess if we only find one, we'll just keep it. What? Keep it and see what it does. Sounds good. I had heard that you were uh, quite accredited. Your reputation precedes you. I trust the Queen Mother is not wasting her money on you. Does it? Our reputation precede us? Quite so. Oh, I... Mm, I don't it remember, don't honestly. Trouble getting us. Well, you must figure, there are only so many level 8 characters in this world, so... <clears throat> Indeed. <sighs> when did I get to level 8? <laughs> <laughs> Time flies, yes. This morning eating breakfast, I was I thought I was like three. Levels came quickly to you. <laughs> now I have spoken with Mr. Herrick, and your horses are currently being arranged for at this very moment. Whatever uh, rations and preparations you wish to make, we will of course fund that as well. However, once you are on the road into northwestern Aurelia, you will find that there are not many civilizations around White Plume Mountain. The closest settlement is the village of town. The people there are... Yes, town. The people there are rather... <laughs> timid. But they... They should provide you lodgings. And at the least you can store your mounts there. Yes, and we will also be needing climbing gear. Quite so. Uh, write, a, write a bill, and we will... Uh, Gets a peace favor and immediately just starts writing. We'll refund you <laughs> in full. God, weather gear, climbing gear, rations for three weeks. So, that is my pitch. Any questions? And of, of course, will you be taking the job? Well, of course. Of course we're taking the job. I'm just going to nod. Very good. The Queen Mother will be delighted. Then I shall off to make our arrangements, unless there are any questions. No questions here? No. No. Where, where are we to meet once the job is finished? I would assume right back here. I will be staying here with Mr. Herrick, as will my clients, until your timely return. Or until word reaches us of your demise. <coughs> that won't happen. I certainly hope not. Oh. Right, we're apparently very good at this. That is what they but say. <laughs> good luck. Us, and he'll uh, nod, 
shake Mr. Herrick's hand, and he and his clients will leave the conference room. Well, before they do, I would like to go up to their clients. And, okay. like, approach one of them. Mm -hmm. And I'll go lean towards his ear and quietly say, in... Um, Caprian? Caprian, yes. Uh, praise be to Queen Mother. The all quest is safe with me. All three of them murmur. Uh, for the breeders. For the Queen Mother. Glory be to the Queen Mother. No, I'm gonna nod. Then I'll go they, back to the new. They all speak at the same time. Mm hmm. It's very cultish. Yeah, I'm gonna kind of just like <laughs> sneer at them as <laughs> I'm <So> watching. <laughs> I'll just be nonchalantly just playing face back. Once all of the clients are out of the room... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's it. Okay. Once all of the clients are out of the room, uh, Zoot closes the door and then turns, All right, that's the most money we've ever been offered, so don't fuck this one up. Hmm. I'll buy, of course not. No sass on this one. And... Oh, God, your name's... Um, Sophia, Elise, play nice. No shenanigans this time. No promises, sir. No promises. I promise no shenanigans. Sure you do. And that means no unnecessary injuries. I have to pay for your medical bills. I can't help it if people trip. <laughs> sure, that's what I do. I trip all the time, sir. It's totally my fault. You're so clumsy. Right. Well, that's what the medical budget is for, though, isn't it? The medical budget goes into the bonuses every holiday if we save. So let's get some <laughs> high bonuses, right? Don't worry, Zoot. I will take care of them, and I'll put my hand on both of their shoulders. <laughs> good, good. At least one of you's... Oh, you. Uh-huh. <sighs> well... Just don't fuck this one up. As usual, I will be taking the guild fee of 15,000 gold boss. The rest can be split up amongst you. Is that usual? Is that normal? It's it's usual. It is That's exorbitantly motive. high. It's ridiculously high, but it is normal. Like, it's there's like no check. chance of, like, knocking that down. <laughs> you want to try? <laughs> yeah. This is a very dangerous job. I think ten is more uh, appropriate. Make a persuasion check. Okay. Oh, my charisma! <laughs> <laughs> Here I go. Here I go. Six. Six. You no, no, it. pretty sure it's fifteen. Hmm. Yes, very dangerous. Fifteen <laughs> to cover the life insurance policies. Don't worry. I'll make the gravestones very big. How thoughtful of you. Yes, yes. Such well, a kidder. If they die and I live, don't have to worry about the gravestone. Can I have their bodies instead? No, yes. you may not oh, have mine. That is perfectly natural and human. No, yes. no I do not allow this. <laughs> is our captain from Capri too? Yes. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Caprians. <laughs> For scientific purposes. Yes, I yes. I'm not allowed this. You may not have my body. This is not happening. Well, yeah, you'll be dead, so you my be journal. Safe. Well, whatever happens, just come back alive with those eggs and that fortune. Mostly the money. That is our intent. Good. I'll get out of here. I'm tired of not seeing my money. Shut up. <laughs> oh. He has nothing to say to All right. No, he just... Let, let, he let's just, go. I'm gonna, like, push Eric out of the room. Like, okay. He's kind of a pushover, isn't he? Yes, he is. I mean, that's why he stays behind, honestly. Yeah. So... Man. Um... Your characters like come a, equipped with a fair bit of gear. If there's anything non-magical you want to add that you can carry, 
you can feel free to add that to your character sheet. You don't have to go out and buy it. Climbing um, gear, cold weather gear. That should be in the compendium. You can just click and drag right onto your character sheet. Okay. And out in Isatar, you can uh, feel the cool sea breeze. It's a warm, sunny day. Um, as, as mentioned before, there's a thick stone wall around the city, and you can actually see, like, gleaming blue and red flags at the top of each uh, turret. You can see that uh, the sun kind of beats off of the red brick rooftops of all the buildings here and there. Somewhere a church bell rings as you go about your shopping needs. But we'll say two hours later, you've got your gear. Uh, you each have a mount. Probably all horses, to be honest. Um, even, even Eric? Uh, yeah, even Eric. He gets a horse. He's got a pony, right? Mm, he, he probably it, it would have it would have been good to give him a pony, but no, they didn't think about that. They got him a horse. I don't need a horse. What about a mule? It is a long walk. An ass. When I walk, the ground shakes. That is irrelevant. There's nothing irrelevant, whatever that word means. Oh, that is true. Nothing's irrelevant. And then I just stare off into space for a while, <laughs> thinking about that. <sighs> Are you thinking about having my baby? What? Did you say Did something? You... I wasn't listening. You... Uh... I'm just gonna walk away. <laughs> <laughs> this is so hard for me. <laughs> yeah, sure it is. You can is. you can blame Jesse for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you guys are hitting the road. I think I have enough shit, so yeah. So I am on a horse, right? <laughs> yep. Presumably, if you, I mean, you might try not to carry, the, or not to ride the horse, but eventually you're going to fall behind. It's just a question I, of how long until you realize it. Can I also purchase weapons? Uh, yeah. Because you gave me a short bow, but no arrows. Oh, <laughs> the arrows should be included. I apologize. You should have 20 arrows. Oh, I want more than that. Quiver holds 20, so you'd need multiple quivers. Fine. Okay. Um, Put them in your pocket. How can she hold all these quivers? Don't tell me what to do. Given your origin, by the way, strong. your sickle should be a comma. What? Your sickle should be a comma. Uh, spell that? K-A-M-M-A. -M -M -A. Mm -hmm. That was M-A. It is. That's what I said. K-A-M-M. -M. Statistically, the, or mechanically the same thing. It's just a different style. How many javelins can I have? Um, I would say reasonably you could probably carry five. Okay. Does that sound? That sounds fair. I think. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. I had four. I want to get another one. So oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Normally you probably carry five. You lost one in the last mission. Um, but before you know it, you guys hit the road, and at first it's kind of an easy country road. Uh, it's cobblestone. It's right through the forest. Um, well maintained. You pass several Aurelian patrols on high mounted horses. Um, they have lances and composite longbows and gleaming silver armor as they ride past you going the other way. Um, at one point, you even see flying overhead, maybe 500 feet up, an immense airship powered by whatever mysterious magic the Aurelians use with three uh, spinning propellers. Uh, it f flies by with a loud roar that probably startles your mounts a little bit, but you know that it would be going to the um, the airship dock in Isatar. So this would not be the first time seeing such a thing. Um you would know that in Aurelia, such sites are much more common. The road takes you then, over the next few days, more westward. 
and you follow the the cobblestone until it becomes dirt, and the dirt until it becomes little more than a uh, a footpath in the woods. Your only sign that you have passed out of Aurelia and into Kepri is with the the nature of the trees. Everything somehow seems bigger, older, and more clingy. Uh, the the branches are wrapped around each other and form complex webs of wood and branch and bow. And you the, the road branches off in numerous places. Though, of course, with your map, whichever one of you is in charge of the map, you never get lost. The forest is not haunted, per se. Just a little creepy at times. At one point, you can see immense wooden structures rising out of the treetops. Uh, the path doesn't take you in that particular direction. You're kind of more riding past them, but you can see them over there in strange uh, shapes that don't look like they're architecturally sound. Uh, oh, perfect. So it's probably Eric who is in charge of the map. You yeah. know it. Navigation. Not me. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he's a smarty pants. Throughout, I'm smart and strong. Throughout the next week of travel through Kepri, um, I would say that John Jacob Jeremiah often seems distracted as though he's listening to something that no one else can hear. And indeed, John Jacob Jeremiah, there are many things, many fascinating things of which we don't need to discuss here because they're purely human thoughts, nothing more. And I'll be jotting down on my journal and spellbook every now and then. <clears throat> um, when you get into the deeper parts of the forest, you see signs of immense bugs, spiders the size of houses, uh, you don't actually see them, just signs of their passage. You see spider webs that go all the way up into the treetops and around forming complex nests that almost look like they could be cities of of the creatures. You Pretty see, normal, right, for the area? Um, I don't know. Are, are, do you think you'd be passing through Capri often? Uh, I mean, we've been here a while, right? Only on yeah. odd jobs and stuff. I mean, you're definitely an international mercenary organization, so it's certainly possible you've come to Kepri before. I'd say so. Um, definitely Eric would know these parts. He, at some point, had to pass through here to get to uh, Isatar. Um, once you get out of the deeper, darker parts of the forest, it actually clears away really quickly until you cross a river, and there's you know a nice, quaint stone bridge that goes over it, and then you're in plains and fields, and you're riding through pasture. Uh, the next few days are very pleasant. You can see another forest, an oak forest, to the north, though the road never takes you there. It actually winds past, and I'm sorry, I probably should have been showing where this route takes you. You pass into Aurelia, and there actually is a wall there, and there are sentry towers and there's some people who check your business as you're entering the country. They want to know if you have any imports, um, if there's anything you want to declare. <laughs> they search your mounts for smuggling or if, if you're trying to sneak drugs or anything in. I'm going to assume none of you have any illicit goods. Oh. Well. Well. No. Okay. No. Um, they don't seem pleased to see a tiefling. In fact, Sophia... Um, they ask you a fair few questions. They want to know, um, when's the last time you've been in touch with your fiendish family? If you maintain extra planner contact with anyone, um, stuff like that. Yeah. How do you want to play that? Do you want to, are you forthcoming or are you sarcastic or secretive? Um, I wouldn't say secretive, but definitely like sarcastic and like yeah yeah whatever i'm a tiefling you're judgmental i'm just gonna <laughs> it's <yeah>. funny you, <laughs> didn't, you didn't used to get this shit on the east coast this only happened when you came west yeah even the bloody corvanians weren't like this you know they they never questioned your heritage yeah but i think i've been on this part to have anticipated it and kind of just been like yeah whatever it's, I'm over you. It's Moving like having on. a darker complexion and going through airport security. It sucks, yeah. but at this, you've kind of, you've gotten now. used to it. 
I know you're going to be judgmental out of my face. Um, but then you're through. You're past Aurelian, the Aurelian border and into their wildlands. And this part isn't very uh, developed. Um, so you actually... About two weeks since you set out. You riding over rocky plains and barren fields. You come in sight of the village of town. It's... it's damn it. Every time I, get, I deliver that with a perfectly straight face and you people get me cracking. Um, Who named this place? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> It's got an E at the end, I'll have you know. It's town. Yeah, yeah. town E. Yes. Town E. It's, it's pronounced town, though. Um, Hang on the map where we are. Yes. Yeah. The village of town is about here. Very near White Plume Mountain. It's about five miles. You can actually see the mountain in the distance. Um, and rising from the mountain in a little feathery plume is the namesake of White Plume Mountain. A column of smoke, or steam perhaps, or maybe fog. You can see that the mountain is kind of split like a, like a corner, and there's just sort of a, a patch of rock that goes right up to the mountain, and you can see that there's a crevice that winds its way up the side of the mountain. Um, the mountain is almost perfectly conical, uh, more of a volcanic hill than a mountain proper. Since you can see the size comparison to real mountains, the mountains you're used to. Um, the mountain itself is about a thousand yards in diameter uh, and rises about 800 feet. So five miles out, it's, it's pretty small in the distance. It doesn't like tower over everything. Um, the white plume is in fact a continuous geyser that spouts from the very summit another 300 feet or so into the air, trailing off to the east under the prevailing winds that blow across these plains. Um, the spray collects in depressions and then runs downslope, merging into a sizable stream that passes actually right through town. <clears throat> the people of town are grim and quiet. And as you ride in, you can see that there's only, it's a very small village. There's an inn, like a single floor inn, with a little stable that doesn't look like it could actually hold all of your mounts. Um, there's maybe a dozen houses, a general store, a couple uh, places of business, and that's it. That's town. Wait. What would you like to do? What time of day is it? Um, you arrive around noon. Mm. Are we going up to that mountain today? That's what I'm trying to decide. I mean, we could, but do we want to rest since we just traveled all this way? Or oh, I just, right I just had a thought. Do you think that giant smoke coming out? of the mountain is why they call it White Plume Mountain. No, I definitely don't think that's why. Oh, darn, I thought I had. Well, sorry, what were you saying? Oh, I was just trying to decide yeah. if I'm, I'm going to slowly it. turn to her. That is exactly why they called it White Plume Mountain. Oh, marvelous! <laughs> Man, I wish I had come up with that name. It's probably caused by the water underground, heated by magma. Mm, I'm gonna start taking notes in my skin book. I, I'm sorry, you said. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> uh, she just has a a tome with human skin on the cover, of, like made out of the the binding in the cover. Okay. She likes to take okay. notes in. Totally normal. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen her do it before. Oh, I've been meaning to You ask. never really get used to it. No? Is that um your skin or no? <laughs> My skin. It's very mm -hmm. insensitive. I'm not sure whose skin this is. But mm -hmm. did you make it? No, uh, hmm. 
I think I found this. Yes. I think you found it. I don't remember. Is Goodness. it the skin of your enemies? Oh, probably not. I don't have any enemies. Yes, how could someone like you have enemies? Right, yes. John and Jacob's gonna... is kind and wise and gives me everything that I need, including this book of human skin, which is great for writing in my dream journal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, going back to something that you said, John. <laughs> um, you did mention magma, which I've been reading this note since we started traveling, and it does mention fighting a beast in the boiling bubble, and I can't help but think that that's probably magma. Or it could be really hot water. Oh. I mean, there is that, but I have a feeling we're going down into this thing, so it might very well be magma. I don't like that. Don't get Just burned. Just a thought, though. Just a thought. I and say that... we go today. You say we go today? I think that's probably a good idea. I don't see Let's the go. point in wasting time at town. We might as well. We're well we outfitted. Need to fight. We need to fight now. You need to fight now. I'm either fighting or fucking. You got it. Mm hmm. Yes, me now. I'm going to start practicing my like my moves, kind of, you know. Just the funny thing moves. is, you could be referring to either or. Yeah, I was just, yeah. Say, you're just swinging your dick <laughs> around or something. <laughs> I've only got two things that are big one is my axe, and the other is in my pants. Uh, I. I'm just glad you're interested in uh, fighting at the moment. Oh, man. Do we need to stop in this town for any reason? Oh. That's cool. Absolutely not. So you guys are I mean, we might have questions about the area. Oh, wait. We should put our horses somewhere, yeah? Maybe we're we walking to them? Are we walking to them? I don't know. How close does the mountain look from here? Five miles. five miles. Oh. Yeah, we can walk. You want to walk five? By the time we get there, it's going to be night. You do? Okay. Five <laughs> miles? <laughs> I love Andalonians. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think it will take it so is not, long. It is not that far. I don't know. I think the we horses... should probably just ride our horses. Sin in a flat plain. Tied to a tree. Yeah. Or some rocks. So, to describe the area a bit, uh, White Plume Mountain stands alone in a vast area of dismal moors and tangled thickets. Oh. Great place for, for, for pack animals. Yes. Wonderful. We should leave the horses in this uh, place. Ah, I guess. <laughs> Unless you want to walk all the way back because they were killed by something. I mean, it is just five miles, right? No, I mean all the way back to where we came. Oh, I mean, that's true. Fine, fine, we'll leave the horses. Oh, uh, what's wrong? Don't want to walk? No, no, I don't. You want a piggyback ride? <laughs> Who's willing? I'll give yeah. you one. And then you can stay on my shoulders. You even nope. carry the breed? Uh, for a while. You I'll just drop her when of, I... Uh, <laughs> you look kind of scrawny. Now you know that this is called lean muscle mass. <laughs> I've explained this many times, I think. To, to clarify, you do have just like nothing but bones, right? There's no oh, muscle. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. aware. I, I'm no, aware. I, I, was asking, I know I what I have. Sure if, I wasn't sure if like you were partially rotted or if there was just straight, clean, polished white bone. I'm walking towards the mountain, just to let you know. I'm just gonna start stomping towards it. Okay. I'll kind of like Where are you get like this horse? so that she could jump on my back. <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go for it. Come on. Are you guys just gonna like dismount in the middle of town and then just leave your horses? <laughs> no, I'm going. Yeah, to... I do that. I'm gonna go put our horses somewhere. <laughs> Probably, hopefully, a stable. Yes. It sounds like you are left with five horses. <laughs> I'll take care. I'm we... the one with the money. Fine, I'll take care of it. We ran <laughs> off, literally. I will assist. <laughs> okay. Make sure she doesn't actually sell the horses to like a meat factory or something. So the stable looks like it can fit four horses. 
Uh, I think you can, uh, where do you sleep? I'll talk to the stable hand. <laughs> you can put one more horse in there. No room. You have no other room? There's no room. You can tie the horse off out back. I'll feed it with the others. Fine. I'm gonna make dang. sure that that's uh, John Jacob Jeremiah's horse. <laughs> I was gonna ask who. Who's Why that? my horse? Not yours. That's John oh, Jacob wait, Jeremiah. That's not you. I lied. Sorry, I'm not used. I'm to just gonna all these Eric. new names. I'm gonna make sure it's Eric's horse tied up out there. No, wait. No. I'm gonna make sure it's Sophia's horse tied up. Yeah, <gasps> I was like waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm not used to being so salty. He does charge oh. an arm and a leg to stable the horses. Like, literally? He charges five gold. Oh, okay. my God. Per day. <gasps> what? Five gold per day. You're not Why likely you... to come back. It's insurance. No. Oh, so you're going to give this back to us when they come back? No. <laughs> But I'm likely to have to take care of them. Gonna have to sell them when you don't come back. How terrible. You'll have to sell them and make money. It's labor. I think um, three gold per day is more reasonable. How, how old is this guy? <laughs> old. Old. Looks Can like I make he's it in his persuasion late check? 60s. Does he, have, does he have flappy skin? <clears throat> Some flappy skin? Yes. Like skin. Yes. Man, like, is he like bent over, hunched, or is he? No, he he stands mostly upright, though his skin is very sun bleached. Um, can I, can or sun worn. Go, go up to him and just kind of pull some skin. Check how stretchy it is. <laughs> he pulls away from you uncomfortably. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have some extra skin. I don't suppose I can have some. Oh, what the fuck? Anyway, uh, three gold per day sounds fair, yes. Make a persuasion check with advantage because he's a little unsettled. I need that advantage. Four! <laughs> Four. <laughs> no, no. It'll be five gold for, per day for the five horses. But I look or you very can take him on out with you. Thanks a lot, John. You unsettled him and you messed up my deal. <laughs> oh, <what is> that? <laughs> well, I was quite curious if he has enough skin to cover my journal. Isn't that what everybody does? Jealous oh. of my journal. Oh. Go ahead and make an intimidate check. Journal. <laughs> John Jacob. <laughs> uh, but I'm not trying to intimidate. That's okay. You're it's just... an unintentional intimidate. Yeah. I'm wondering how far I am right now. <laughs> Getting further and further. Mm -hmm. They're spry. They'll catch up, I'm sure. Slightly mm. better than oh, wait, Um. Wait. So that's a four. Yeah, he's <laughs> We're pretty. Such a good he's team. stubborn. <laughs> you spend like the better part of five minutes haggling, and he's just having none of it. Okay. Well. um... I'm not sure how many days we will be gone. So I am going to pay you for... A, a week. Wait, do we have enough time for a week? Fine, that can come out of your share. Why don't we charge it to that dude? What? Sir Sebastian Belfer. Oh yes, put it on that tab, please. We don't have a tab. <laughs> pay up front. No, there is a tab. He doesn't even smile. <laughs> Sir Sebastian Belfort. That's what he said his what name is this was. Mysterious tab. <laughs> well, I guess maybe that's only for the town. Yeah. This well. is a village. Well, I'm gonna give him 25 gold out of John's portion. Oh, I have a portion? Fascinating. 25 gold. I don't have money yet. Well, you guys yeah, were given 500, 500 up front. I took it all. What? 
Hey, wait, I literally have zero gold in my inventory. I'm holding all the money. How did you steal my money? No, no. <laughs> he gave right me out the of my... pouch and I just took it. Right out of my inventory? How did you do it? You didn't actually receive the money on your character sheet. Oh. Well, I was just going with No, it. I'm doing, oh. like, the yes and I take <laughs> right. all the money. <laughs> um, okay. So, you pay up for the horses. You guys have to jog a bit to catch up with the others who are making their way out into the moors. Actually, she can't be you probably, that fast. She's, yeah. a, she's piggybacking. Cla Clara's like, she went ham at first, but then after like 30 seconds, she's like, ugh, ugh. Oh, she doesn't want to stop, but she's going slow now. Still hanging out. Doesn't even have lungs and still dying. <laughs> still dying. Uh, okay. So you catch up fairly quickly. How did the uh, stable and the horses go? That's great. Yeah? How much did he charge? That's not important. Let's keep moving. <laughs> no, no. I think it's a little important. He didn't want to share his skin. Now, at least you have my coin purse, right? I did give that to you, didn't I? Oh, yes. You oh, are goodness. wanting it now? Oh, no. You know, it's better off in your hands. You know how forgetful I am. And yes, how I... I lose my money all the time. Right. Speaking of losing money, Elise, how much did he charge? Uh, John was um, generous enough to pay for all the horses. Or was he? How much did he pay? Who cares? Because that's <laughs> between you two. I'm just going to walk off. Hmm? John! Follow yes. Her, like, John. The song. How, mu how much did you uh, pay? I didn't pay anything. I didn't have gold. She just said that you paid. Apparently so. I was not aware of made the transaction. Okay, well how much did she put down in your name? It's, uh, 20 for all five horses. 20 for all five horses? Yeah. I'm just gonna walk off. That's enough to buy a <laughs> mule. We can just the horses. We don't need horses to do anything. We can walk. Well, at least they'll be happy and secure and safe and all under the building. Yes, of course. That is how stables work. Right. The stable looked a little small when we passed it. All the horses fit? They fit well enough. Well enough, yeah. Okay, Elise. So, as you guys walk, the land gets increasingly uh, difficult. Mm. Um, those Not of you accustomed to such th Oh, right, right. Uh, Elise doesn't seem to have any problems with it. Wait, but... ain't I good too, actually, now that I think about it? What? Oh, uh, never mind. Oh. I was thinking about the Christmas thing where we were revenants. So... Oh. That ain't you! <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm still a risen, though. So you guys... Uh, you, you don't get tired, but it is still, it slows you down. It's, it's, uh, it's rough. It's very difficult mm -hmm. terrain. Um, as you draw nearer, the mountain looms before you, and you can see that great white vent uh, and the geyser billowing out the top. You can also see that steam vents are visible in various spots on the slopes of the mountain, though none of them look to be large enough for a person to squeeze through. However, as you draw within one mile of the mountain, you can see that there is a cave on the south slope. Uh, and every, um, every 30 seconds or so, a large cloud of steam billows out of the, the cave mouth. And then after about 30 seconds, it suddenly all pulls into the cave before billowing slowly back out like breathing on a cold winter day. Oh my. Is that natural? Make a nature check. Yeah, you should uh, go investigate that. As Fortnite. far as you can tell, yes, it probably is natural. It's likely that that means there is um, access to the interior of the volcanic uh, tunnels inside that mound through that cave, though. Standing in front of it, is it really hot? 
Well, there. you'd have to get close, but the closer you get to the mountain, yes, it does seem to get balmier and warmer. Um, and it also gets louder until, as you're at the base of the mountain, there's a continuous roar from the plume. Though you could obviously hear the whistling as you drew near. In fact, you could probably hear the whistling in the distance all the way out to town. So it's like alive. Of course. In the way. Well, we have to go down there. Yeah. That's what the note said. We can't take that cave. It's is too hot. Can we like look around for like another entrance that goes downwards? Mm hmm. That'd be a make a group survival perception or nature check. Um, you can each roll pick your favorite out of those three. You said survival, nature, or what? Perception. Perception. White plume mounted. We would like to be in you. Wait, How what? do we get in? Fifteen. Oh, okay. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, so we've got. 13, 8, 11, 15, 11. So you guys take the better part of a couple hours circling the mountain, uh, maybe even moving a little ways out into the moors a little bit, looking for maybe a cave or something that goes in. You see no other... Like, the only, see, the only means of access look to be the geyser at the top, which is likely not <laughs> good. Jump in! There's the cave in the middle, which, funny enough, um, Clara? Is that the name? Mm -hmm. Clara. You remember an esoteric bit of knowledge. Oh, yeah. Don't they call that the wizard's mouth? When prompted, you don't really know uh, where you learned that. It's just a thing you know. Oh, yeah. Don't they call that the wizard's mouth? What? What is the wizard's mouth? What is that? What? Uh, I don't know. That would be the... That refers to, you know, the breathing cave, if I wasn't White clear about that. White Steam Mountain. Um, is and this your entrance? You find that there are also those volcanic vents, which, aside from the fact that they would likely boil your, the skin off your bones, if you have any, are oh. too small for a human to fit through. Mm -hmm. After about two hours of searching, you guys find no signs of another entrance to the mountain aside from the wizard's mouth. Can I, like, carefully go towards the front of it and, like, feel if, like, the air is, like, way too hot for, like, one of us to go into? Mm hmm So the cave mouth is about eight feet in diameter. As you draw near to it, it's in the process of sucking all of the steam inward. So it's kind of like you're following the steam up to the mouth. Um, as you do, um, actually, never mind, never mind what I was going to say, because I don't think you'd have anything like that. Um, but there is a loud whistling noise as the air just whips past you. It's like you're in a breeze. And then for a couple of seconds, everything is silent and it stops. And then suddenly it all comes blasting outward in a great burst of steam. The steam is not hot enough to scald you, which is a good thing because it probably came out a lot faster than expected. Um, it blasts around you all over. Um, you find that it is hot, but not hot enough to burn. Just mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Like being in a hot sauna, mm -hmm. though every 30 seconds there's a blast of cold air as it's sucked back into the cave mouth. Mm. I'm going to go back towards the rest of them and... Uh... I'm going to say, all right, I'm obviously not dead. Uh, it's pretty hot, but it's not reason? too hot to go in. Look, Elise, I'm going to need you. I'm going to need you to stop. <laughs> it's hot, but it's not too hot. <laughs> Does anybody want to investigate this cave mouth with me? Well, Let's yes. Go. I'll go. Yuri, Wait, the yeah. wise will protect us. And... Uh I would like to cast a spell first. Just give me a minute here. Oh. Okay. Are you casting that as a ritual or as an action? Yes, ritual. Okay. So John Jacob takes about 10 minutes to settle down and begin casting one of his mysterious spells. When he's done, 
You don't see anything. There's nothing. The the piece of string and the little bit of wood that he had been laying on the ground are consumed in magic, and then that's it. I'm, I'm going to pull out a lamp, fill it with oil, and I'm just going to hand it, hand it like in the middle of the air, then light it. Okay. And then it'll just... Okay. And it'll just like hover behind me. Okay, now I'm ready. All right, let's let's go then. So you guys are all going up into the wizard's mouth. Yeah. Oh yes. yes. Okay. Let's go. You guys make your way up, and there's a uh, exhalation of steam that blows past all of you, drenching you in sweat and. Uh, this hot, moist air. And you kind of can't see as you're um, navigating your way up the hill towards the cave. And then suddenly it's all rushing past you. John Jacob, your lantern, actually, the flame inside flickers and goes out. Hmm. And then you have a few seconds where you guys are just walking up this hill towards the dark cave. You're ten feet five feet, and then suddenly steam is blasting back out. I'd like to relight it and go keep it covered. (laughs) Uh. He says that, and then you just the little shutter on it closes. Would would any of us have any idea, or would I have any idea where this like steam is coming from? Like if it's mechanical, if it's Um, make a nature check. Can he use a stone shape? Oh. Hmm. You mean stone 16. cunning? Whatever. Uh, no need, anyway. The nature check works. So you would know, especially from Himnaheim, being from Himnaheim, which is a very volcanic area, um, it's not likely that this is mechanical. It's likely that this is natural, and it just happened to work out that it's like this. Uh, would I know of any kind of way to beat this or to like, because obviously I know the, how it works. So you would, you would surmise that just getting um, deep enough inside, it's likely you'll be close. You'll be uncomfortable. It'll be hot, but the wind from outside will no longer be like breathing into the cave mouth. So just going mm-hmm. in, you think you'd probably be able to get away from the, the lights going out. Okay. Well, I'm going to let everyone know. I'm going to be like, um, just to let you know, it's not going to be so bad inside. Let's go inside. Well, let's go. I would say it's probably easier for us like to wait while the steam is coming out for it to go back in. And then we basically follow it until we're inside of it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I agree. Okay. So you enter into the cave. Um... With John Jacob's shuttered lantern, you can see that the cave is only about 40 feet long. At the far end of it, near the roof, you can see a long horizontal crevice about a foot wide. The air is sucked into this crack at great speed, creating the loud whistling noise and what was, you know, snuffing out the lantern. And then shortly, the rush of air slows down, stops, and then comes billowing back. Um, and you find that in here, it is hot enough to boil your eyes if you don't duck down. But once you get low, like hunch over or crouch, or just be the height of a dwarf, um, (laughs) it just goes right over your head, and there's no real danger. In fact, the steam doesn't even scald, it doesn't even make you uncomfortable, you're just under it. It's just perpetually warm, Mm. but otherwise safe. But you do know that the closer you get to the back of this cave, you don't want to stand up straight. Because that close to that crevice, it'll it'll take the skin right off your face. Mm-hmm. Everybody, um, watch your head. The ceiling and walls in this cave are slick with the condensed steam that runs down them. The floor is covered in several inches of muck. Um, but otherwise, it seems that's all there is to this cave. 
Is there like a like a hole that would like take us downwards, like farther into the mountain? Um, if so, it could be concealed by some of the muck in here. There's a heavy layer of it. Can we search it? Sure. A- any particular way you want to go about that? Uh, just kind of like working my way. Okay, Looking so just kind of kicking around? Yeah. Okay. If they're going to do this, I'd like to take the magical approach and wave around my wand and do this. Okay. Um, as a ritual? Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone else? I'm just going to be helping Eric. Okay. I would like to call upon the powers of Cain the Opulent to light up this room. I will cast it onto my mace so that everybody can see. We don't need to see. I can see fine. Oh, yes, yes. Now that doesn't go out. I'm strong. Um, so, you might have noticed I am putting something into roll 20 right now to set that up. However, uh, outside of combat, we will not be using the map. The map will only be for our Twitch chat. Um, not that I'm playing favorites with our chat, but the map has some spoilers that I can't oh. get rid of. Oh, I like that. I want to see all the secrets. <laughs> so, um... Guess that means we can't be watching the Twitch stream, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, you... That's true. I guess it's not the end of the world if you do. Just don't act on if you see anything. You're not allowed to act on that map. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best to describe everything, though. To the best of my ability. Um... I'm just getting everyone's tokens set up with names so our chat has an easier time than I do. Okay. There. Uh, so with your light, it's immune to the breathing of the cavern. And it does help those who are searching through the muck. At the end of 10 minutes, John Jacob, you do not detect any magic in here beyond whatever may be had by fellow party members. Um, Hmm. However, could I get uh, everyone who was searching with their feet kicking around to make an investigation check? What? Of course. Nine. I will do so also. Number eight. Okay. 14. And four. four. Lovely. Okay. Well, um, Elise, you happen to find very near the back of the cave, um, buried under muck, a trap door with a rusted iron ring set in it. And then it takes the better part of another 10 minutes just to get all the muck off of the trap door. Good job, Elise. It wasn't too hard. Nah. You want me to open it? Oh, feel free. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna... I'll step it. Pull it open. Make a strength check because it it appears to be stuck. <laughs> oh, it ain't stuck when I do it. Uh, Roll one, please. 23. Oh, well, that's, oh a, that's a saving throw. We gotta take your proficiency oh, out. So oh, that'd sorry. be 20 instead of 23. Uh, which, fortunately for you, it was a DC 20. Whoa. You her muscles bulging. You manage to wrench the door free up out of the muck. And as it does, there's sort of a blast of hot, stagnant air in your face. Feels good. And then looking down with your dark vision, you can see that there is a 20-foot vertical shaft straight down that ends at a metal platform. So there's no ladder or anything to get down there. Hey guys, there's a 20 foot shaft and I'm talking about this shaft. Would you stop talking about your shaft again? I don't want to you, hear it. You kind of said that before I even said that, first of all. I just but, knew what kind of joke you were going to make. <laughs> uh, does anyone have rope? I of do. Course. 
Oh, I do too. <laughs> what kind <laughs> of adventure? <laughs> yes. All right, uh, let's get the rope down there. I guess I'll put my. I got like hemp rope, so I guess I'll throw it down there. And is there anything to tie it to other than the door? I guess. Not really. No. Here, we can hammer in this. What is it? A python? Oh yeah. I have climbing gear. We can hammer this in and tie it to it. Okay. I'm going to take the back of my uh, hand axe and just I'm going to hammer it in. Mm -hmm. And then we're, I'm going to drop the rope. Okay. Who wants to go first? Well, don't you I'm usually gone. do that? Hey, don't yeah. Don't you feel more comfortable going down there, Mr. Dwarf? Yeah, I do, actually. I'll go, but... I need a kiss from each one of you ladies first. I'm just going to go hop right in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, obviously using the rope. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> you slide down the rope 20 feet before landing on a metal platform that immediately turns into a spiral staircase that descends into the darkness. Ooh. I'm going to search for enemies or anything down here. Make a perception check. Elise, wait up! What are you doing? You don't see or hear anything. Except for a low, continuous vibration. And hear when feet. you're yelling at me. <laughs> Looks clear. Oh. I'm going next. I'm going to turn to uh, the one holding my lamp. You first. Does this I'll... look stable to hold multiple people? Still... Um. Yeah, maybe. Make an investigation <laughs> check. Hold on, let me check this. I'm not very good at it. Eight. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, you're fine. Hurry up. <laughs> I'm gonna start moving down. Okay. Um. Just so I get out of the way. I, I figured. Yeah, and as yeah, you go, done. Um, you can feel a faint vibration in your feet. Like this thing is going to fall? Or? No, in, it's been going since you put your feet on it. Oh. You felt this vibration. And you can, only when you really listen, you can pick out uh, sort of a, a hum in the air. Like the very walls are humming. I'll follow after John Jacob. Okay. Oh, damn it. I almost had you guys, your tokens positioned in the right order. Okay. So then Eric and Clara? I think Sophie said she wanted to go next. She did. Elise, Sophia. Oh, yes, I will John go. Jacob. I will go after Sophia. Well, John Jacob went after Sophia, I think. No, John Jacob went before me. Yeah. Oh, he did? I had that backwards. Oh, I was right the first time then. I. I got very confused. Okay, got it. So one by one, you clamber down this rope and land on this metal spiral staircase, which, by the way, is in the middle of a 20-foot by 20-foot shaft. The staircase is only about 10 feet in diameter, but the, the shaft is bigger, so like there's, there's no wall outside of the spiral staircase. It's just open darkness. And Eric... Actually, I should say Eric and Sophia... When you lean out over the stairs and look down, even with your 60-foot dark vision, you cannot see the bottom. You can just see that the stairs continue down. I'm going to light a torch and drop it. Okay. You light up your torch, drop it over the side, it falls, falls, and then goes out. Uh, did I see anything as it was falling? You saw just a glimmer like water. Oh, so basically the water at the bottom, right? And it looked like the stairs go all the way down as well. Oh. There's water at the bottom. Let's go and move on. And I will say all of you, as you travel down these stairs, are aware of the, the vibration in the stairs, like in your feet. You can feel like this whole place is vibrating lowly. Would I know if it's like a machine? Um, from your earlier nature check, you would know that this is likely 
from the geyser at the top of the mountain, which is continuous, and a geyser of that force would likely be shaking the mountain itself. Okay. Um, I wouldn't know why this staircase is here by any chance, would I? Well, someone clearly built it, but no, beyond that, like, it all it indicates is oh, okay. there's somebody moved in here. You said the staircase is metal? Yes. Was it... The way you said it, was it... Did it, like, drop down when she stepped on it? Or was it, mm-hmm. like, already down? It was already down. Okay. Um, and it's badly rusted, though it does appear to be sturdy as you guys make your way down. The air down here is warm, humid, and f- pretty foul. And it goes down about 100 feet before splash you find that the floor is submerged beneath a foot of water. Hot water? Warm water. I wouldn't call it hot. Let me make sure everything is set. Okay, beautiful. Let's zoom out a bit. Does it all look like it's the same depth all over? Uh, It's hard to tell. Um, because the water has splotches of green and white subterranean algae all over that clings in patches to walls, the ceiling, it floats on the surface of the water, but most importantly, it makes it very difficult to see the, under the water's surface. So we don't know how deep it is. You know it's a foot deep where you're standing, at the base of the stairs. That's about it. And then you have a swim. Like, are any swimming? Oh, well, I mean, come on. Well, I'm not very good at it in this armor, but well enough, I suppose. What about you, dwarf? Eric? Uh, I've got some pretty tough armor on, but... Dwarves sink anyway. Is no, we don't. We, we float under the water. Okay. Is it Mm -hmm. bubbling water? Mm -mm. No, it is not. Is it coming from anywhere? Like, is it moving at all, I should say? Yeah. That is an excellent question. But no, it is still. Hmm. It's probably just all collected down here from the walls. Uh, How far does it go? Yeah. It continues as far as you can see. Now, there's a corridor at the bottom that runs to the east. It's about 10 feet wide. And goes as far as the eye can see. I will also note that Eric's torch is just floating in the water nearby. I'm going to grab it. Okay. It's soaked, but if you dry it, you could probably use it again. Yeah, I'm going to, like, shake it off and then kind of, like, try to dry it and then put it back in my backpack. Okay. If you are worried about getting your feet wet, I can cast a spell so we can just walk on the water. Ooh. I'm perfectly fine with walking in the water. I would advise walking on top of it. Sounds fun. Okay. She'll reach into her things. Little satchel. Pull out a cork. Crush it in her hand. And cast Water Walk. Who are the targets? It's up to ten willing creatures, so... Everyone, including what's her name? Sophia? Yeah. Are you casting this as a ritual? Yes. So it'll take ten minutes. Don't forget to touch here. And this is going to move like what looks to have been a person sized invisible thing. <clears throat> what? I have to be able to. Wait, you're. Invisible it does say Yep, see. it has to be dark to creature to... she can see. Oh. I can't see it, so I can't cast them. Oh. And it's funny, now that he draws attention to it, you can see that right where he was gesturing, there is two holes in the water like some invisible feet are standing mm. there. I'm going to kick it. Ah. I'm going to be like, oh! Then I'm going to try kick, to kick it. <laughs> it feels like you kick a leg. What the heck was that? Don't worry about it. I just He's kicked not it. not bothering him. anyone. <laughs> so Who is he? That? It's not a he. 
Who is she? No, you cannot fuck it. I never said that. <laughs> I never said that. You thought it. I did, actually. Uh, <laughs> okay, the spell should be good. Go ahead. Wait, nobody cares about the invisible thing? Woo, I jump until I'm on top of the water. Jump, jump, <laughs> jump. You are standing on top of the water. Woo, and then I'm going to just jump up and down a little bit so it splashes. It'll be cool. It does splash, and it's a really icky, like, uh, hot sink water that's been sitting out for, like, three hours. Tee-hee. So it's, like, started to cool. Did I splash anyone? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> Eric Good. is next to you. <laughs> oh, my um, goodness. I'm going to grab the uh, lamp back and I'm gonna tell him try to follow us as best as you can there is no reply you said there was a corridor yep it continues to the east I would like to start walking down there yeah let's go I'm gonna follow her okay so Sophia is leading the way mm. sure excellent oh, me I will them. be close behind with my light. So Sophia and then Clara. I have my light too. And oh yes, let me light you up, John Jacob. Sixty thirty. But mine's better because mine is the magic of the prodigious mind and a fantastic genius. Just to and let I you have, know, uh, my wand on the other in my other hand. Okay, so we have Sophia and then Clara and then who's up? Who's third? I'll go next. Okay, Eric. And I'll go then next. John Jacob I'm, with Elise at the back. I suppose I'm at the back. Okay. You guys continue walking along the surface of the water. The walls remain moldy and covered in algae. There's no bugs that go skittering by. But after maybe 30, 60, 65 feet or so, you finally come to a turn in the corridor where it turns to the north. And Can I see anything down it? What's that? Can I see anything down the path like with the lights? Yes. As you start moving to the north, you don't go very far before something comes in line of sight. Kill it. <laughs> um, Let me cut wait, its head off. Why isn't, why isn't that showing up? Does Clara not... That should be displaying... Push the enter button. Something is wrong. Why is Eric the only one displaying? Because I am all that's man. Okay, well, up ahead, you can see uh, a large beast sitting in the middle of the, of the corridor. And all around it, the corridor branches. So it's sort of like a peace sign. There's a fork that goes northwest a fork that goes northeast, and a fork that goes straight north past it. And right in the center of this intersection, you see an immense creature with the body of a lion, the wings of a dragon, and the face of a human woman. Oh. Has it noticed us? Check? Can we do a check? Well, seeing as you are in a dark corridor with a brightly lit mace in hand, yes, I would say... blind. Check. Hello! I wave the mace around. No, no, what is it? Can I, can we do a check? Who this could you? be a nature or a history check. Is the woman face beautiful? Um, elegant is more the word I would use. Mm. In sort of an unearthly kind of way. I got a six. Mm. I'm gonna turn to Rick. If you die fucking it, can I have your skin? <laughs> uh, Clara, you know you this are. to be uh, a gynosphinx. What? Uh- it is a type of sphinx, always female, usually benevolent, but also fierce. They have a fondness for riddles, and they tend to reward those who get their riddles right and eat those who get the riddles wrong. Oh. I'm actually going to... Uh, how far is it from us right now? Uh, 20 feet from Sophia, who's the closest. I'm actually going to pull out my, uh, my, just my shield and put it in my right hand or whatever, whatnot, and I'm going to walk up to it and um, be like, <laughs> be like riddles, huh? So Eric kind of struts past 
the the two ladies uh, walking his way toward the gyno sphinx. In the middle of asking your question, you suddenly bounce off of like a glass door or something that was in in your path. And blinking, you look at you see nothing there, but you definitely just hit something invisible that was like a wall. Um, I'm gonna try to take my battle axe out and kind of like tap it a little bit. Tink tink, solid. Um, you cannot pass," says the why sphinx, not? smiling coyly at you. "Why not? Because you have not answered my riddle." "Well, you should answer my riddle." "Do you like riddles?" "They are decent." "That's nice." And as as this is going on, what's everyone else doing? Cuz Eric kind of rushed ahead. I'm going to, like, stand behind him, kind of off to the side a little bit, just, like, watching and waiting. Okay. I'll, I'll stay at the back, just watching. <laughs> well, I was I was waving my mace back and forth, but... Oh, she I... was a little distracted. She had started to look at you, and then Eric went charging forward to right. flirt. Right. When I see, when I see the, the, the light, the pretty light reflecting from my from the from my spell onto the cave walls. I'm gonna ponder life a bit while Eric does his thing. Okay. <laughs> Tell me a riddle then. Very well, since you have asked so nicely. Oh, I just cut lost. Out. Yeah. Who who cut out? You, you did. did. I did. Am I still cutting out? Might no, have been the no. sensitivity. Damn it. Apparently, I can't use that voice. No sexy Sphinx voice for you. Well, since you have asked so nicely, let me think. Oh, round she is, yet flat as a board, altar of the Lupine Lords, jewel on black velvet, pearl in the sea, unchanged but ever changing, eternally. What am I? Can you put that in chat? <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah. I couldn't type fast enough. It is in the chat. Round she is, yet flat as a board, altar of the lupine lords. Jewel on black velvet, pearl in the sea, unchanged but ever changing eternally. What am I? I'm going to turn it. Oh. Eric, do you know? No. Okay. You don't, you don't know. Tell me. Well, let, let me whisper it to you, and then you can give her the answer. Sounds good. Okay. I'm going to whisper in his ear, his ear the moon. I'm going to look back at her and be like, the moon? <laughs> you sound so uncertain. The <laughs> moon. I, uh, my <laughs> answers are like how I take women. She uh, raises one giant lion's paw and just waves it and then splashes back into the water as she sets it down again. Wait. <laughs> didn't go anywhere. <laughs> I am right here. So Can I, I'm going to try to move forward. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm actually going to walk up to her. You okay. can. There is no Does, longer a force in your path. Is the d oh. oh, okay. I guess that's I was, say. was that right? You are very good at riddles. She didn't need them. Thank you. I'm always good at riddles. And I'm going to turn and um, I'm going to wink behind me. Why did you wink at me? <laughs> what? I think he was <laughs> winking at Sophia. Yeah. I'll do, uh. I'm standing behind you. Please don't wink at me. Again. <laughs> well, I wink at every lady, just to let you know. Is there anything discernible down any of these paths that I can see? Make a perception check. 
Perception. Lady Sphinx, are you gonna try to eat us? To. We try to go past you. No. It is not my place to rob others of their meal. 22. Oh. <laughs> um, let's see. Hmm. You can just see that the corridors continue in all three directions. Thanks. Though, to the north, you can make out what looks like a side passage. Maybe 30 feet behind the Sphinx. Mm. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the Sphinx and say, if I answer another riddle of yours, will you tell me which direction is the best to go in for getting farther into the mountain? Possibly towards, what was his name? Starts with a K. The wizard Karaptis. Yeah, that one. Karaptis. He has, in fact, tasked me with that very chore. Oh, great. Of course he did. You've answered the riddle, my dear. Your fate is already sealed. Each path holds something that you want. Oh, it's okay. Okay. I got you. Oh, I got great. you. Cool. All right. Well, let's just start left to right. I disagree. We should go right to left. Well, maybe we should just start in the middle then. No, I think we should go right to left. <laughs> I'm going to start walking behind the Sphinx and go down the Middle? northern path. Yeah. Okay. Sophia starts going north. I'm I'll still follow. the Sphinx. Sphinx. Okay. So Sophia is in the lead now. Eric is staring at the Sphinx. Who said they were following? I am. John Jacob goes north. What is Clara... And Elise doing. I'm still staring at the cave wall, looking at the pretty light, probably. <laughs> it's very nice. Uh, Clara, we should probably follow so she doesn't get them all killed. Hmm? Hmm? Oh. Okay. I will be right there with you. I'll start following that way, too. Okay. Same. So, Eric... Uh, was there something you wanted to say to the Sphinx, or are you just kind of doing you? No, I'm gonna... So, Sphinx, you've got good bone structure. Why, thank you. You're you know, very fit. my lineage is very strong. Is that right? Yes, I think you and I would make good babies. <laughs> oh, there he goes again. I do not Stay breed with lesser folk. Lesser? Smaller. Small? <laughs> oh, 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 small. <laughs> I can take an army. Is that right? That's right. I have taken down gods. Is that right, little one? You but, must oh, indeed be mighty. By Odin's wrath? I have destroyed many. You are a funny little creature. Oh my goodness. I'll come back and I will mount you. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but right now I have to go catch up with my group. But I will come back and I will mount you. And you will see. You and I will make great babies. Sphinx dwarven babies that will destroy though anyone who tries to attack them. I'm sure we will. She says as she scoots out of the way so you can <laughs> continue past Ooh. her. So she agrees. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head, head with Jesus them. Christ, guys. Hey, you How said she agreed. Um, so as you move north, you find that there is a little side passage, which I have to scroll down to because God forbid you go left or right. No, we got to go in the middle. Um, okay, there it is. As you move along the corridor, you see that to the right uh, is a circular 10 by 10 chamber to the east. There's nothing in it, as far as you can tell, just scummy water. Which we can walk on. Mm -hmm. That lasts for an hour. 
Can can we choose to step into the water or are we forced to stay on top of it? Uh, let me take a look at the spell text. It doesn't really... It turns I water think, into a surface. I don't think you can because yeah. if the target creature yeah. is submerged, they go up. Yep. Can I, can I stick my hand in it still, though? Yes. Okay, then I'd like to however I can on my knees or on my stomach or whatever and reach my hand into the water like see if I can feel anything in the water or the floor your hand goes down as all the way to your shoulder no sign of the floor yeah, okay. it's, it's deep cool. though moving back into the corridor you feel around and it's still only a foot deep can I feel like in sort of the quote unquote entry ray, are there like stairs down or is it just like drop? Um there are no stairs, it's just a straight drop. Interesting. Hmm. And there's nothing on like the walls or anything? Doesn't seem to be. Hmm. It's an interesting room, but I don't think there's anything in here that we can tell. So I'm gonna I guess the room again. Uh, to, to what? How big is that room again? Oh, I'm sorry. Ten by ten. Ten by ten. You said it was circular? Mm-hmm. Okay. And we haven't, en and we didn't enter it. Uh, well, no, she, oh. she did, and then she got on her, like, okay. her knees and sighed and reached her arm in up to the shoulder. Oh, okay, okay. Stilly, mm -hmm. was my unseen servant able to follow underwater? Yeah, it's just trudging along. Okay, um... Could you grab any object in the center of the room is what I will ask it. Uh, like under the water? Does it find any I object? I don't know if your unseen servant can swim. I imagine it Well, it along. doesn't breed. Hmm. Alright. Uh, you tell it that. You see the two holes just move toward where Sophia was standing and then just turn into a big hole and then disappear, like something dropping into the water. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Nothing. Could it? Uh, Nothing. What happened to your servant? Nothing. I don't know. There's a splash of water, and then something moves back onto the corridor. Is it carrying something back? No. Oh. I think it's safe to say there was nothing in there, then? Stilly? Huh? Are these caves all natural, or were they carved, or what? Uh, make a nature check. I'd like to also do that. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I got a nat one three. Nineteen. So, oh, there we go, Eric. And also, I believe dwarves have a thing for this, don't they? Stone cunning or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So you actually don't even have to roll, but there's a that's an excellent nineteen you got. Um, Eric, you can determine that these were carved out of, and in some places melted through solid rock. Hmm. These were melted through. Like, none of this is natural. This was all man-made. Or magically made. Magic or men made this. Okay. Something I will note, by the way, uh, for Sophia's benefit, when you reached down and felt the floor, you also felt that the floor was very muddy on the bottom. Yeah, I already assumed that. And actually quite slick and slippery. Um, so, so you guys are aware, move speed of 30 in the water, uh, I guess it's not, you're not in the water, so never mind, it doesn't matter. The Unseen Servant is, though. Okay, the Unseen Servant's speed is reduced by one third. Oh, this spell only lasts for an hour, an hour, so if we want to keep it, we should keep moving. Cast it again. Yes, I could. 
Oh wait, now Ritual that is a waste. Use the spell slot, is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, <clears throat> ritual casting. Never mind. Uh -huh. Yeah, I forgot about that too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just keep moving then. Or you're pushy, Sophia. No, uh, I just stand around and do nothing for an hour until we fall back in the water. Of course. More of a challenge. I'm stand around. I'm going to keep moving forward. Looking to the north, the leader. it does look like about 20 feet ahead, the corridor opens up into a larger chamber. I will head that way. Okay. Mm. Um, let me move you guys up. The one downside to doing this, I have to do your movement myself. <laughs> so you all move into this larger chamber. Ahead, it appears to be a completely water-covered room, though you can see steps rising out of the muck on the far side. What do the steps lead to? Another corridor, but it's not one that's covered in water. That's, hmm. Is there anything else in the room? Wait. I might have... Oh, no, I didn't do this wrong. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm used to Pathfinder's way of organizing text, so... Uh, I'm sorry, it, what was your question? Is there anything else in the room? Was there anything else in the room, yeah. Um, make a perception check. That would be 21. Damn. Um, yeah, actually. You notice a couple of things. First of all, you notice that this room appears deeper. Like, you become aware that the one foot deep water continues about five, ten feet into the room, but beyond that is just a sheer drop off that would have easily been missed. Hmm. So water walk might have uh, might have helped out there. You also notice something bobbing near the center of the room in the surface of the water. It's almost An apple? hypnotic. There's a a bit of maybe kelp or plant material just floating in the water. Is the water it? bubbling? Correct. Is no. the water bubbling? The water is not bubbling. Okay. Though, you actually see there's a second spot where the uh, where there's another bit of plant material just floating on the water, and Can it I seems to spiral. Or and... not, it is in fact plant life. Um. But could you? I'm going to answer your question with a request. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, no. I'm ready. Um, no. Sophia, I'm ready and who was the next one in behind Sophia? Me. Elise. I'll finish this. I need Sophia and Elise to make wisdom saving throws. Okay. Okay. I knew it. <laughs> I was going to ask if this is a pyramid Seven. shaped place. 22. No, this is not pyramid shaped. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> what happens to me? Let me read this. Yeah, tell me so I can laugh. Yeah, really. Word. <laughs> there you go. Let's oh, do God. this. So, oh, <sighs> the two of you see the plant material in the water seeming to spiral and twist in strange patterns, and it's very fascinating, almost compelling. Uh, Elise, you recognize the threat to your psyche, to your sense of self, and you quickly turn away like, whoa, 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 not good. Whereas Sophia, you're just enraptured with it and taken in more and more. And to you, you see the form shift into a very attractive... Uh, I guess it'd be your choice since it's determined by your internal psyche if it's a man, a woman a very attractive person we'll say. Maybe an yeah. elven appearance. I was going to say androgynous. Yeah. It's the, the, the individual reaches out a hand toward you and kind of beckons you, smiles and you're, you smile back just so taken with this sight you start to step forward. Would I be able to grab her? Uh, so what I'm going to have everyone do at this point is roll initiative. 
We just click initiative, right? Yep. Yeah. Um. What did I just close my character sheet for? Ah. I wish I could tell you. So could I. Um, I do just want to remind you about Water Walk. And that if I get submerged, that it... Launches you back up. Yep. <laughs> I remember. Just just wanted to remind. Oh, don't worry. She's fine. She's just bobbing in the water. <laughs> do you have that thing, Bijan, where you have advantage on... It automatically does it. Okay. I set it up on his character sheet. That's why I notice it's wow. red like a natural one, but he still has a 13. Yeah. That's how. Crazy. Okay. So... My mysterious creatures got a 19. Sophia? Uh, it says 26.16. Okay. The decimal is the tiebreaker. for It's just okay, your dexterity score. Okay. Elise? 21. JJJ? Mm, 14. J times 3. Okay. Uh, Eric? 13. And Clara? 9. All right, excellent. Let's sort those out. Okay, so Sophia, unfortunately, you have initiative. So, unfortunate. Well, because it means Eric does not have the chance to grab you. Ah. In fact, since my secret's out, let's go ahead and move you onto this map for the time being. Yay. I know I would have a great role in initiative, but yeah. <laughs> as beautiful. soon as you have advantage, you, you suddenly don't roll as good. It's weird. I know. Performance that? anxiety. That's that's what it is. I need to tap. Yeah, get it up. Okay. Whoa. So. Let's uh, change up our music just a hint. So, Sophia. You mm. are charmed. Unfortunately, you were the. You saw this one, so this one has you charmed. Mm -hmm. You consider that one a trusted friend, if not straight beloved. Mm -hmm. But you are also, let's see, charm target is incapacitated, and instead of holding its breath underwater, it tries to breathe normally. Now, yes, that will launch you to the top, but it will still, you know. You're still going under and, you know, with the water. Um, you are more than five feet from the Kelpie, so you must move on your turn toward the Kelpie. Okay. Um, so, if there's no objection, I'm going to go ahead and move your token now towards it. I mean, I have to. That is true. And water walk, you can just straight up walk right over to it. Hello. Here I am. Which you do. Uh, it does not avoid opportunity attacks. Uh, okay. So as you do this, the other Kelpie that you provoke from looks at you hungrily and leaps out of the water. And to everyone else, you don't see these beautiful humanoids. You see this... Uh, well... You see this. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. it's, so cute. it's about the size of a mastiff as it leaps out of the water and some of the seaweed that makes up its tail wraps around Sophia's throat and like jerks her head back. Uh, not quite breaking her neck, but it's a slam yeah. attack. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a lot of dice. <laughs> you are incapacitated, which I believe... Do not give them advantage. I believe if you are incapacitated... Let me double check. Incapacitated means you cannot take actions or reactions. So cool. that's good. That means they don't have advantage to hit you. Yeah, but I can. So... Do one of my things. That's true. This attack did not hit you. The seaweed just kind of wrapped around your throat and was more of like a stroke and a caress as it pulled off of you <laughs> and dipped back into the water. You don't even seem to notice as you just reach towards this other monster in the water that to you looks like right. such a beautiful creature. 
You may now make another saving throw. Oh, thank you. I was hoping I could do that. Wisdom? Mm hmm. But this is the end of your turn, unfortunately. But if right. you make it. Huh, you did make it! it. Ba I did! Barely! Yay! You barely succeed, but you are able to, as you're coming towards this creature, you kind of snap out of it like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, what? And realizing where you are and what is happening right now, uh, your mind kind of snaps back to you and you realize that you were on the verge of just dropping down into the water and drowning yourself. After Sophia is the Kelpies. Both of them let out this strange, horrible cry that's sort of a mixture didn't between... He, didn't hmm? they get a 19? Yep. I got 21. You did. Why did it not order you guys correctly? Oh, I know why. <laughs> Whoops. Um, There's no turn tracking? No, it's because I put you in the wrong column. Mm. Okay, let me try this again. It did it alphabetically. There we go. Okay, Elise is after Sophia. Um, I would like to do a check on these. Is that nature? Yes. Like, what the heck? What the heck are these? I you have know. no idea. You recognize them as something capable of affecting your mind uh, with hypnosis, but beyond that, you don't know. Well, that's not cool. Uh, let me check... Water walk is not concentration. Cool. Uh, I will cast, uh, let's see, frostbite. I'll pull out my little pouch, sprinkle some. Wait. Do these not have. Oh, never mind. These, this doesn't have a material component. I will just cast frostbite on it. The on closer one? one. No, oh, the farther one. So, that might be out of range. Oh, no it's not. No it's not. Okay. So, it has to make a constitution save. Is that damage? Or oh my god, you rolled like... Yeah. Horrible. I rolled like... Who? So, that's a 15 to save, which I believe is right on the money. Uh, yeah, my spell saves is 15. Okay. So, you reach out a hand and there's just a line of ice that runs along the water freezing solid toward this kelpie and it just dives into the water and the ice goes right over it before all of it shatters and floats away. It does not seem to have been affected by the ice. Got it. And I'm gonna move. Okay. Ooh, I like my I like my thingy. I'm just gonna walk on the water over here. Though I will point out, technically, Sophia is the only one who noticed the drop-off in the water. Okay. <clears throat> I'm still walking on water, so right. I don't really care. I was gonna, not that it matters to anyone, you're... Yeah. Okay. After Elise is the Kelpies. For real this time. <laughs> um, the Kelpie by Sophia suddenly snarls and lunges on you, and it is going to use a multi-attack to attack you twice, trying to ensnare you with two different strands of seaweed. So the first is an 11 to hit you, which I assume does not hit. The 11? Mm-hmm. Um, correct, it does not hit. How about 15? That does hit. Okay, one strand of seaweed wraps around your arm, and then several times, coiling tight and squeezing your arm painfully. Uh, you take 14 points of piercing damage. I'm going to use my reaction to uncannily dodge it and have the attack damage against Smart. me. Smart. So that's only 7 damage that you take then. But you are still grappled. Which means your speed becomes 0. <laughs> cool. As it hooks into you. Um... And the other Kelpie uh, looks at Clara, snarls like it's angry, and then just turns on Clara, seemingly not interested in a meal without meat. <laughs> <laughs> and is going to swim over here. 
But I taste good too. And as it does so, it swells, getting larger and larger into the size of a horse. That's a big horse. And it kind of moves, swims in front of Elise, like for the block. I'm going to ride this thing home. <laughs> and that's its turn. John Jacob Jeremiah, it is your turn. Okay. Well, I would like to know what these creatures are. That would be a nature check. I will roll for a nature check. When I find it. Um, 12. Roll to 16. Oh, uh, 16. 12. Oh, okay. 12. It is a 12. Uh, you know these to be Kelpies, a type of uh, monstrous plant. Um, you know that they are intelligent, evil, and carnivorous. You know that they have some ability over the mind. There's, huh. They're supposed so. to be really hard to kill, too. Um, you can't kill them with traditional means, you recall. there was. There's a way, but it eludes you. You're not really sure the details of fighting Kelpie. They're pretty rare in this part of Ender. Hmm. In fact, it's well, pretty much unheard of that they'd be found anywhere outside of Taluna Sincere. I want to know how strong this one's mind is. I'm going to pull out my oddly shaped wand and gonna mutter some words and I will cast oops that to be spell text please do um, come on spell text I want your spell text sorry I will cast phantasm force okay you create an illusion that takes root in the mind of a creature that you see within range it has to make an intelligent saving throw and it gets a five. I would say it f pretty thoroughly fails. On a failed save, you create a phantasmal object, creature, or other visible phenomenon of your choice that is no larger than a 10-foot cube. What are you creating? I'd, I'd like it to be the opposite of where it is. Surround, like, wherever it's standing on, it's surrounded in desert. Interesting. Okay. So it feels like it's actually taking fire damage. Well, the desert doesn't really do fire damage. But... Well, dryness. Um... Uh, What's the damage even from? One, it's psychic damage. Uh, where does it say that? Uh, oh, I see. the top on the field save. Uh... Similar, so a phantasm created to appear as fire, acid, lava, etc. Can do 1d6 psychic damage to the target. Okay. Each round of my turn, it, I can make it deal 1d6 psychic damage. Okay, so we'll say that it's in the desert in the middle of a dust storm. So there's like lightning and dust hammering against it that could actually justify it taking damage. And it takes three points of damage. Of psychic damage? Yes, sir. Noted. It doesn't seem particularly concerned. It seems it's like looking around more in confusion than panic or pain. It seems like. But I will go over here, kind of observe how it acts. Actually, no, just a little bit off here, just in the corner. Okay. Kind of studying it. Yeah. All right, Eric. I'm actually going to move closer to Sophia here, right here, and I'm going to actually try to uh, just attack it, straight up attack it. Okay, so you um, charge across the surface of the water with your spiked shield and your battle axe, and let's see how it goes. Um... And is this a reckless attack? Uh, mm, sure. Okay. So, I know you're new to the Barbarian. Reckless attack yeah. means you get advantage to hit, but creatures have advantage to hit you until the start of your next turn. Okay. Are you right. comfortable yeah. with that? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. 
Um, I see it also included your rage damage in there. Did you want to begin to rage? No. Okay. So there should be a little checkbox just for future reference. If you uncheck it, it will no longer put your rage damage in there. Oh, I see it. Yep, I got it. Yep. But 18 does hit for 13 slashing damage as you bring your axe right down on this thing's head, chopping into it. It shrieks, emitting a cry that's sort of like a mixture between a whale's cry and a donkey's bray. Hmm. Um, does it let go of Sophia? It does not. Okay, I'm going to try to shield bash it, basically. And that would be this one. Okay, so not using your spike, more just trying to knock it back away from her? Yeah, to get it away from her, to let go of her. Okay, got it. Uh, so I'm going to hit this. Well, actually, I feel like this should be doing the spike. Yeah, yeah I think spike it does. either way. Yeah. Spike so 23 does hit it for two piercing damage, which is reduced to one point. It being made out of seaweed, the spike just kind of goes right through it, like a bar through a set of blinds. But it did hit, right? But it does hit. So it knocks it back five feet. Um, actually, I'm sorry. That 23 is not against its armor class. It's against an opposed athletics or acrobatics check. Okay. I'm assuming it. Yep, 15. So it still failed. You do knock it five feet away from Sophia. Which means you are no longer grappled. It's te- uh, just... the seaweed suddenly snaps loose of your neck, and you kind of stumble back a little bit away from it as it splashes into the water. Clara, because I did the hold on, because I did the uncanny dodge as my reaction, I can't take a, like I can't attack of opportunity. Can I? Correct. Though okay. forced movement doesn't provoke anyway, only oh, if it's okay. intentional movement. Hurt. Sorry. So, Clara. Okay. Uh, I'll move right here. I want to call upon the knowledge of the great wise wizard, my deity, and make some kind of check to figure out what it is. Make a nature check. Hiya. Yeah. 17. 17. That is pretty good. Um, you know everything that I told John, Jacob, Jeremiah, mm-hmm. that they're Kelpies, but you also know that as they are creatures of seaweed, bludgeoning and piercing damage will be very ineffective against them. You also know that because they are magical creatures, they are enchanted in such a way to make them resistant to fire. Um, you know that they also cannot be tired, they cannot be blinded, and they cannot be deafened because they do not see and hear as normal people do. They sense uh, the movement in water. So, in effect, they have blind sight. Hmm. Yes. Abod has imparted me much knowledge. This day, I'm just going to poison spray him. <laughs> oh. Uh, that has to be within 10 feet, which... Yeah, I should be within 10 feet now. Yes, yes, just barely. So, you run up, and then you hold out your mace, and... A bunch of poison gas bursts from it. It's and not adding in my wisdom modifier, which I got for the potent spell casting. Let me see. What do you mean? It, let me take a look at what that should be. You add your wisdom modifier to the damage. Oh, right. It does not automatically do that. You'll have to add that in. So what you do, you oh, open okay. it up, and you see where the damage... Oh, there's nothing to automatically... Oh, yeah. Add ability mod to damage or healing. It's a checkbox, right? But you found it. Okay. Okay. And now is it added? Uh, Hit it again. I mean, like, send it to the chat again. Oh. Hey. Uh, there we go. I want to use that one instead. I bet you do. <laughs> well, fair is fair. I told you to re-roll it, so I guess... Oh! You- well, if he makes a save, it won't be anything. <clears throat> We're gonna. We're just gonna go ahead and make that save. Um, that's a thirteen. Ah, he does I not failed. save. So you just blast poison gas, and you can just hear it <coughs> back in the uh, in the gas. And as the gas cloud clears, it takes twenty three points of damage. I've got myself the eldritch blast of poison here. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Jesus Christ. Uh. 
Well, it's looking pretty... Like, a lot of the seaweed in it is turning golden or even brown and withering and dying. It looks like it's having a hard time. Sophia. Yeah. Now, I'd like to point out... Yeah. Actually, you probably know. So, well, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm committed. Because no one is adjacent to it, if you are, you would be able to do sneak attack. Right. But I, now that I think about it, you also do sneak attack if someone is adjacent to it, so... I guess right. just do sneak attack whenever you want. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Um, yeah, I want to move up to it. Mm -hmm. Can I bring okay. I want to move up to it, and I'm a little angry at it now, deceiving me and all. Sure. So I wish to attack it. Does the sneak attack automatically go if I click? No, but I made a separate macro for you. You just click sneak attack, and it'll roll it for you. Heard. So I still, oh boy, I still that's have to hit. Yup, yup, that's if you okay. hit. Okay, okay. Whew. Mm. Well, I think I hit it. That's a 20 to hit, which does hit for 24 points of piercing damage. Yup, yeah, boy. Unfortunately, it is no. resistant, oh, so it only yeah, takes so 12 oh. points of piercing damage, but yeah. still. Still. Uh, you stab right through one of its eyes, out through the head. It screams and thrashes and then rips itself off of your sword, seeming to pull itself back together. But more of the seaweed in it is dead now than alive. It it looks terrible, like it's falling apart. Hmm. Is that the end of your turn? Um. You do have a bonus action. Can I attack again with a bonus action? If you were dual wielding. Right now I'll say I'm not dual wielding. Okay. Um, so you still have cunning action if you wanted to do any of that stuff. No, I'll save my... I'll, I'll, I'm done. Okay. In that case, it is Elise. Don't worry, I got this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know you do. <laughs> Uh, that one looks less like a horse at this point and is more kind of into a bull. Yeah. Complete with the horns as it's just barreling across the water toward you. I have a question on mm -hmm. this spell. Here, I'll put it in there. Uh, would it take damage? Oh, okay. Damn it, it didn't show the... Spell text? Yeah, just open it up and click show or include spell text in description. Change that to yes. Oh, is that in the little gearbox? Mm-hmm. Uh, right, left, rear. What? Probably be faster if you would have done it for me. No, no, not here. It's on spells. Oh. Open up the actual spell. Where is it? Uh, second level. Okay, yeah. See near the bottom where it says include spell description and attack? Oh. Off. Change off to on. Okay. Well, read it since you're here. I already closed it. You. <laughs> Okay, there it is. So would it take damage instantly, or would I have to wait till its turn? Let's or see. Um, it does say it When takes... a creature enters the spell's area for the first time, which would be immediately. Okay. Or starts its turn there, which will be at the start of its turn. Which is next. So it'll take this damage twice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to cast it. Okay. Moonbeam. So I'm going to get... Uh, let me see. Um, just get out some seeds what the heck? and just crush them in my hand and oh, I don't know what that is a piece of opalescent feldspar and just mush them together and raise it up and yeah so a beam of radiant moonlight shimmers down from the dark ceiling above illuminating this kelpie uh, until the spell ends, dim light fills the cylinder. When a creature enters it for the first time, right now, it takes eight points of radiant damage. No, 13. It takes, what? Oh. My first, my damage is up there. Is that how that works? Yeah. I just did that for the spell text. What kind of saving throw is this? You're, is that the moonbeam? It's on the wrong one, if so. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna attack that one. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm sorry. That's, yeah. Sorry, I got excited. Um, I'm looking for the saving throw. Constitution. Con, I found. Okay. Right as you said it. Um, natural 20. Mm. Ricker, will you take half? It takes uh, six points of damage. You should have gone with the eight. Why? Because it would have been eight damage instead of six damage. How do you figure? I'm being a smartass. It seems to wither and burn in the light, but it quickly withdraws into the water. It's not a shapeshifter, is it? You don't really know. Well, it would have disadvantage on a You did thing. see it shapeshift just now, though. Did it? Yeah, it turned from a little water horse into a fucking I, bull. I thought you meant that, like, it just got bigger. And instantly reverts to its original form, you asshole. <laughs> That's why I need to know. Uh, okay. Bull Did back we're... down to... Yay! <laughs> uh. It also made it with disadvantage, though. That didn't actually... It didn't really matter. Yeah. It's still a 22, but yeah. Yeah. Well, it shrinks down in the shimmering moonlight. Well, uh, yes? No, it doesn't, because it says if it fails... Oh, is that on a fail? I'm sorry. Yeah. I... Oh damn it! Reading I comprehension. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, I, I do appreciate it's that. It's gonna have to make another save at the start of its turn, which is right now. Yes. And this will be the eight <laughs> damage. What? No. Yep. Don't be a poo poo head. It succeeds again with a sixteen. It has disadvantage. Sixteen, oh. and takes four more points of damage. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> um, water walk isn't a concentration spell, is it? No. I looked that up earlier. Okay. It's not. It's duration. Well, in that case, it's going to rise up out of the water and try to come straight down on Elise. Not like this. Bringing her down into the, uh, the water. Like this. So we've got a 19 to hit and a natural one to hit. The 19 hits. Okay. That's six points of piercing damage, and you are grappled as it comes down into the water, taking you with it about 10 feet down, its weight on top of you, keeping you from springboarding back up. How dare you? As hey, you that grappled. moonbeam stays there, by the way. Yes, it does. So it is ending its turn in the moonbeam, but it's also holding you underwater. So you are now holding your breath. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. This is mostly to determine if you had a full breath of air when it landed on you, or if you had a no air. Eight. Well, that's not the one you wanted to roll. Mm. So I'm going to say you've got three rounds until you start drowning. Cool. Or until you start having to make checks to avoid drowning, rather. Don't worry, I've got this, guys. Isn't she I'll forced blow. back up, though? She would be, except the... Uh, 400 or so pounds of yeah. Kelpie yeah, are on top down. of her, holding her under the water. Gotcha. This, Have fun with that. This other Kelpie Thanks. Um, is going to dive under the water, going straight down. Technically, that would provoke from Sophia. I was going to say. Though, because you're attacking into the water, you will have disadvantage on the attack. Uh, that's all right. 23, 23 still hits, and Damn. even though you don't get your sneak attack, you do get the full 11 points of piercing damage, reduced to 5. I was going to say half still, but... Yep. Still a good hit. And it is under the water, out of sight, but down there somewhere. Blah. Very displeased with how things are going. Hmm. Is it now? Yes, it is. Uh, JJJ. Hmm. Um, how far underwater did those two go? Um, the big one is only about 10 feet under, and so is still technically visible as a shadow. The little one went deep under the water and is out of sight, though technically it's still affected by your illusion. Okay. This... All right, um... So it probably thinks it's drowning in sand right now. Well, it feels it. Well, I would like it to take damage again. Is that you something with my turn? 
Um, intelligence save. Should be at the end. Uh, That's a 15. Oh, no, that's if it thinks it's an illusion. Oh. It needs to um, use its action to do the investigation check. Okay. Well, technically, is... it didn't make an attack or anything, so I am going to give it that investigation check. Which it fails. Which it fails. Wait, 15 fails? Yes. By oh. one. Oh, man. Okay. So he's tripping balls... He's taking six damage. She thinks he's drowning yeah, in that, sand. That damage, applying that damage, doesn't use any of my action, does it? I don't believe it does, no. Yeah, okay. All right, that's what I was concentrating. <laughs> um, I will grab my... a dart. And I will look at that Kelpie. And I will cast Catapult on the dart. Just like... <sighs> You're using a lot of the weird spells. I you like gave it. me a lot of weird spells. That's true. So you're going to need to send Catapult to the uh, chat for me. Uh, the text isn't there. Ah. But it's pretty self-explanatory. If I'm understanding it, correct me, it, correctly, it, you set the, the dart in the air... You take your hand off of it, it floats there for a second, and then there's a sound like a catapult launching, and it goes rocketing down into the water towards what? One of the targets? Um, into this Kelpie. Who needs to make a dexterity saving throw? Yeah, totally not telekinetic. Uh, 15 against a DC 16. So this <laughs> dart just, like, goes sideways into the water and... There's a little woof as it hits the top of this creature for six points of bludgeoning damage. Interesting. I must take notes on this. That is an awesome spell. Is that a cantrip? No. Oh. Okay. But that is my turn. What a strange spell. What a strange spell. It's like if they're running away, you go woof. <laughs> it's a, it, it is a Invisible catapult. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Eric, it is your turn. Well, this one is under water, like 10 feet, right? You yep. said? 10 feet. The other one is deeper, and you're not really sure where it's gone. Um. Well, I guess I'm going to move uh, towards Elise. And just ready, I guess, because I can't do anything, basically. Okay. Ready? Um, What's What are you readying for? In case uh, that big Kelpie attacks Elise or anybody else. Well, Elise is under the water, too. It dragged her down with it. Will I be able to grab her and pull her back up? If you could get down there somehow, <laughs> you could try. Well, you said I could put my hand. Well, it's 10 feet, isn't it? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> dwarf arms. <laughs> Curse these short arms. Hey, no, it's not about the arms. Can I put my thing down there and grab her? What thing? <laughs> <laughs> Just like string it out down there and have her grab it and pull it back up. What thing? My javelin, of course. What are you talking about? Um... Are you trying to stab me? No, like, stick my javelin down there. And, you like, could put it down and ready an action for if something grabs hold of the javelin to try to pull them up to the surface, I would say. I'll do that. I'll okay. do that. I'll put my javelin down there to, like, in case she grabs it, I'll just but pull that it up. Will, that will put the burden on her to get a hold of it, though. Okay. Okay, yeah. So that's your readied action. Clara. Uh, I think I'm going to do the same thing, actually. Down there? Oh, wait, no, no, I can't do that. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a javelin. Of I forgot. Um, I will ready a magic missile on that sucker. Uh, wait. You can actually no. cast it on the big one. 
castle? Yeah, maybe I can. Well, I really wanted to kill the other one. Um. Hmm. Okay, I'll move right here. And I'll cast Magic Missile. You kind of flit across the surface of this algae, scummy water and three. shoot a couple of... H- how many missiles are you shooting? Uh, three. Just three? Three orbs simultaneously out of your hand, down into the water. Roll damage. Oof. Oh, wait, that's only one. Uh, yeah, that's 1d4. Magic. I, roll it? I think Magic Missile shoots three missiles, doesn't it? Right, so I'll roll it two more times, I guess. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 13 damage it takes as one after another they strike it. Take that. It seems annoyed by the interruption. Sophia. Oh, shoot. Back to me. Mm hmm. Uh. Um, ten feet down. Dang. What if... Okay, so the spell Water Walk, it said willing creatures. Mm-hmm. If I become unwilling, you know, during the duration of it, do I go into the water? Yes, though once you do that, you, the you spell, you, you don't come right. back, right. Ugh. Do we know how much longer we have on it? Uh, like 15 minutes. What? It's been that long? What? Well, okay, actually, let's say like 25 minutes, because it was 10 minutes of casting... Oh, no, that was the second ritual. I was thinking Detect Magic. Mm-hmm. Was that the most recent ritual? Yeah. Nope, it would be hers. Okay. Which is one hour. So then you spent, we'll say, 10 minutes with the Sphinx? So 50 minutes. You've got about 50 minutes left. Or, well, travel time. 40 minutes, let's say. All right, well, how do you do the the checking distance thing? Um, on the toolbar on the left side, near the middle, there should be a circle with a line in it, like a upside-down Q. Ruler. That's the ruler. Ah, that's nifty. Okay. Um, I'm going to move here. And, um, if, if, no, it's still not far enough. All right, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, wait for it up here. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm just gonna, like, yell out to it. Come up here, you big pussy. Do you want to try to taunt it? Yeah. Make a deception check. Deception? Oh, me. No. This will be opposed <laughs> by its insight. Okay. It emits another of those uh, donkey bray slash whale cry sounds under the water. And it's a sound of largely frustration as it's looking up at you. You can even see its glowing amber eyes down in the water. What's up? Was that considered an action or like a free action? I would consider that... Hmm. Probably Mm. an action to try to taunt it. Okay, I'll accept it. Um, you do still have your bonus action, though, which you can use for all manner of fun things. Can you use a bonus action to attack, though? Only if you took the attack action. So not okay. this turn. You wouldn't be able to. Um, then I am just going... I'm just going to wait for it to come up. Okay, got it. Well, Elise, it is your turn. Uh... Okay, well, I'm going to cast Primal Savagery. And... Another interesting spell. Yeah. My fingernails get sharp, and I grow really sharp teeth, and I just freaking lay into it. Okay. You can see, by the way, that there is a javelin kind of floating in the water near you. I ignore that. Okay. (laughs) Um, 14 will hit. So you do one d ten. You do two d ten acid damage for seven points. It takes all seven, but it does not let go of you. Well, I scratch it up. <laughs> okay, yeah. You lash out at it, and it's just not letting go. Um, 
its turn is up. It's in my moonbeam. It's in your moonbeam. That's a wisdom save. Do I, I re-roll damage? Right? Yep, and it made it save again. <coughs> it has disadvantage. It does. Fuck! It takes 14, 14 damage. damage. And you revert. And he gets small. You get small. <laughs> can it still grapple me? Is it still? It grapple? can still grapple you, but it can no longer drag you through the water. And in <laughs> fact, suddenly you are launching it upwards, <laughs> yeah! and the two of you burst from the surface of the water. Wait, does that mean Eric gets to attack it? No, because his ready to action was to pull Elise up if she grabbed the javelin. Oh, yeah. So Eric, like you're in the middle, like down to your shoulder, reaching in with that javelin, and then suddenly Elise and this Kelpie burst from the water right in your face, sending a little, like a, a shock wave, kind of sp- washing you backwards away from them a little bit. Um, the Kelpie is up now. It emits another of those horrid bray roars. And is going to move over here, which only provokes from Elise. Oh, guess what? What? I'm a war caster, so I can cast this. Oh, no. I gave you that feat. <laughs> you sure did. What are you going to cast? Does it have to be? It can be any spell? As long as it's an, um, an action of one. And single target. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't really want to waste a bunch of spell slots, though. So I'll just do Primal Savage. Rap Primal Savagery again. Try to swipe him. You miss. I see that. In fact, you damn near take some of Eric's beard off with that swipe. <laughs> oh. Um, get a little like acid dribble in your beard, Eric, and just like some of the hairs are melted away. It's not much damage, but it's it, it's what could have been. That's really the problem. Uh, it lunges for Sophia with a double attack. Oh my god, that was a lot of dice. We've got a 13 to hit and a 7 to hit. Both miss. You have angered it greatly. And yeah. now, like, you're in business with that cocksure grin. You just kind of dodge and dance to the side, back and forth, and it just can't come anywhere near you. Sup? Sup? Come at me. JJJ. Mm. Which reminds me. I need to make a check down below, don't I? I forgot to take the other Kelpie's turn. It is not if yet JJJ. Oh, yeah. Does it think it's in illusion? Yes. I mean, it... Yes, it does, because it's suddenly drowning in the desert when it's intelligent enough to know where it was. Okay. Well. But it's just not convinced enough. It's not believing it. Not really. So go ahead and roll damage again. One. Oh. One psychic damage. Okay, that is good. That is good. That is excellent. Um, it just... It's kind of drowning down there. It keeps trying to swim away. It swims out of where it was. Um, but for this one... It goes straight up. And actually surfaces from the water. Just bursting up into the air. For a moment glistening. Droplets falling off of it. Before crashing back down into the water. And I believe that spell is not localized, correct? It follows it? It follows it. It yeah. thinks it's in it. Well, that is a bummer. Illusionists are scary. That's it's scary. not beside, right beside me, is it? It is right beside you. Oh. It just has no idea that it's right beside you. Because it All thinks right. it's buried in sand. So it does not well. attack. I would like to continue this experiment. I'm casting infestation at it. Ah! Darn this le- Okay, wait. Include spell description. You are Ah. a very scary spellcaster. Natural one on the saving throw. So, as it's in the sand, uh, scarabs and other beetles begin burrowing out of its flesh and it's engulfed in a swarm of beetles and it emits one final piercing cry before taking 11 points of damage and dying. 8 damage, sir. I 8 rolled. points of damage and dying. Oh, oh. 
as it is literally it, consumed alive by scarabs. Ugh. Did the body sink, or I hope it's floating? Uh, there's not much body left. Your bugs are eating it. No, no, no. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get have a vial. I want some of these. You can <clears throat> gonna... like crouch down and just scoop a little last remnants of seaweed into your vial and put a little cork in it. Ah, excellent. That's my turn. I'm a bit pleased. <laughs> Eric. I'm gonna pass some of the insects. The Kelpie is on the surface with you now, sir. I am going to try to attack it. All right. Let's see what you got. Is this reckless? Uh oh. Yes. <laughs> well, that's a critical hit. Uh, that'll be 14 points of damage. You hack deep into it, shearing off the back half of its body. It screams and falls in the water and looks like it's going to try to swim away with what little it has left. Mm. Can it's, I shield bash it? You can. You're a dual wielder. I'm going to try to, actually. Let's see. 26 hits for three points of damage. You kill it. Heck yeah. You slam the shield down on it and there's like a little kerplunk into the water as your shield is flat on the surface and as you pull the shield up, there's just a stream of algae and seaweed dangling off the end of the spike and no creature. Hmm. Combat is over. And at this point, we're going to take a brief... Uh, 10 minute or so break. We're back. Hey. Okay. So let's get right back into things. Uh, I am going to apologize right now. People in chat might notice that the vision is not showing what everyone can see. Uh, for some reason, visibility is restricted to what Eric can see. It's just going to have to suffice. So... The waters in the room go still once more. Bits of dead kelpie continue to float on the surface, mixing with the other scum and algae. The water is still, save for the ripples that spread outward uh, wherever you tread. You can see stairs in the northern wall that rise up out of the muck and continue to the north. And who knows what lies below the, the surface of the water in this chamber. What would you like to do? Is there anything else in the room like along the walls or like anything like that? Nothing is immediately apparent. Hmm. At least not on the surface. Um... I guess I'm gonna like look around at every you guys okay? Y'all y'all cool? Yes, I'm fine. Well what we're looking for is not here. <laughs> no, for that's for sure. So everyone up for moving forward? Yes. Can I look down at like the base here and see if there's anything like shiny? Or like bodies or anything? Um, because I assume this was like the, their nest. The, it is, but the water is scum covered. You'd have to go under to really be able to see anything. Like, what if I just? Okay, never mind. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so let's uh, move on. I could stick my base down there. It has light on it. Stick it down under the water and see if it illuminates anything. I could uh, end the spell, then you could just go down. Let's not do that. Let's not be too hasty on that. That's okay. I, I like walking on the water. It's fun. But I will stick my mace down there. Does it help at all? Um... Only when you initially plop it in, how it kind of breaks the algae apart a little bit 
but it, it quickly kind of closes up. But you can kind of quickly like stir with the mace to clear a little patch of water. Ooh. And seeing down through the murk, you can see that it looks to be about 30 feet deep. But is there anything down there that you can see? I'm sorry, 15 feet deep. It is about 15 feet deep. Oh, that's not very deep. Um, yeah, the light reflects off of bits of sparkle <gasps> and the unmistakable glint of gold. Oh, I see gold down there. Oh, do we like that? Can I grab some of these sparkle? Exciting Wait, one? use your unseen servant. <laughs> Um, you do have to be able to see it. But yeah, as long as they keep stirring it up. Now granted, it looks like the sparkle is primarily located uh, in this general vicinity. I'll move which closer. You can't, like when you get over it, you can't see the sparkle anymore. And it looks like uh, there is a roof over it. Like maybe <laughs> there was a small underwater structure down there. Oh, like a little can chicken I, uh, coop. Mm -hmm. Can I use this to animate little creatures to pick things up for me? Look at what it says you can do. That fits within a five foot cube. You manipulate it. And... You can cause the water to form into simple shapes and animate at your direction. Can I like scoop stuff up with it? Yeah, I'd say you could do that. And just constantly be like, like if I do like a sphere, I'll yeah, just and then like work it like up. It. So yeah. every five feet, like the spell fades, and you have to cast it anew. So it's like everything goes up, then starts to sink, and then goes up even higher. It kind of creates sort of a, an ebb and flow. Well, but... I'd like to try to grab this shiny thing from my angle. If there's, you can get a few right. coins. I would say a few gold pieces. Okay. No, that that shiny sparkly thing, whatever that is. Just coins. Is the shiny? Is <laughs> this coins? Well, tell you what. Why don't you go ahead and make a perception check? I would like to do a make a perception check. Should I as well? Like, what um, can I get? Nah. Yeah. You will get the rest of it, Clara. It's just so. Yeah, John, you don't notice anything. You, you get a couple of coins. Uh, I am offended. Oh, anything sorry, you can put these coins. Uh, Elise, you get the bulk of it. Um, it takes some time. It actually takes about 10 minutes to get it all. But down in that, as Clara put it, coop, are about 600 gold coins. Uh, gold boss, actually, which is the minted currency of Kepri. Uh, and there's also... A little silver crown set with diamonds worth about 2,000 gold. Wowee. Who got that? And a suit of gleaming plus one chainmail armor. <gasps> wow. Is anyone writing that down? I am. Did you forget about how plus. Enchantment work for fifth edition. Uh, like in every edition, it's just plus one. Oh, I thought we were supposed to. We would know it's plus one after a rest. Uh, you would, but I'm assuming at your level, you guys are hot. You're skilled enough to recognize a basic suit of plus one armor when you see it. Are we? Thank you. Chain armor medium. I think chain mail might be heavy. Let me Is check. it chain mail or chain It's shirt? chain mail. Okay. I'm looking. That's, sounds like it's heavy. Chain mail plus one is heavy armor. Dang it. Can anyone wear this? Uh, I can wear it, but it won't feel form. great. <laughs> Eric doesn't like to wear armor. Eric, do you want to wear this? No? No, not really. It is plus one, though, so maybe it would be better than other armor. It would make defense. your armor class 17. Mm. Yeah, I'll take it. What the heck? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. And I'll take that. Is he proficient, though, in heavy armor? That's yes, the question. I am. Okay. So Actually. what you would do, Bijan, is in the compendium, just type chain mail 
And you should see Chainmail plus one as an option. Just click and drag that onto your character sheet, and I believe it will automatically do the rest for you. It is a bit wet. Ooh, it's 19. How's it 19? It, so it oh, your shield. Out. Yes. Yep. Nice. Oh, that's good. That's Thank really good. Us, yeah. In the meantime, I want to cast this on myself. Oh, good one. Okay. That you can do. I'll just put all the other shit in my bag, I suppose. Well, the unless gold. you guys want weight of those coins? Want the oh. Gold. No, you you're really take... good at keeping track of the finances. I'm terrible with these types of things. I just put it in my gold weight. I can carry it just fine. Okay. Yep, roll 20 handles that all for you. But to answer your question, it is 22 pounds. <sighs> that is so much coin. Or no. It's 12 pounds, I'm sorry. Bad math. And you got the bit of jewelry worth 2,000 gold? Yeah, I wrote that down. Okay. Okay. So at this point, it probably took you guys quite a bit of time to do all this. I'm okay with it. We'll say you're looking at about 35 minutes have been have passed since you Just cast water. Just let me know when it's gonna Need. disappear and I may recast it again. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, should we move up those stairs? Yes. Is that what you said? It goes up? Yeah. Okay. I'll move into there. Okay. The stone steps lead up out of the muck you find that the floor is still pretty muddy, um, but carved from rock. To the right, at the top of the steps, you find an eight foot by eight foot oak door bound in iron. And another 30 feet onward, another door leading north. Both closed? Both closed. I'm gonna go up to this one. And I'm going to knock on it. Three times. Why There's no reply. We'll do John Jacob kind of nods. Answer. Isn't it oh. customary to knock on a door when you want to go in first? No, I mean... Not yeah. if the place is occupied with enemy forces. Mm, yeah, oh. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to try it. You're going to try what? I was going to say I'm going to try to open it, but that might not be the best idea. I'm going to check to see <laughs> if it's trapped at all. <laughs> ah, okay. Why don't you make an investigation check? Okay. I will help her. That With is... advantage. Fifteen. Fifteen. The two of you search this door, and you don't find any sign of a trap. Though you do find signs that the oaken door is swollen from the dampness, and is mm, probably so going to require to a bit of oomph to get open. Mm -hmm. um, without there being any traps visible, I'm going to turn the knob and no, I'm not going to slam into it. I'm just going to try and see if I can open the door a little bit. Okay. Make a strength check. Bloop. That's a saving. Do I just hit strength then? Yep. Okay. Oh, that's the saving throw uh, to the what? left of that. But you can keep the natural 20. Uh, it was not adding your proficiency anyway, so that's it's the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Natural 20 for a 21. You... Oh, and then you shoulder check into it, slamming it, the door open. It kind of crashes loudly open. Oops. Sorry. Well, what do I see? What you oh. see is a corridor. Well, that would be why nobody answered me. The corridor continues... 30, 40, 50, 60, and more feet. It's long so it into the darkness. But about halfway down the corridor, it, the stone changes abruptly to a spinning cylinder, apparently made of some light-colored metal. The inner surface rotates rapidly. It is painted in a dizzying black and white spiral pattern. Think like a fun house. Oh. And it glistens as if coated with some substance. I'm going to walk in, actually. 
Okay. I will cautiously watch what happens to Eric. <laughs> don't get enchanted. The, the spinning doesn't start until the you can kind of see it on the map. Yeah. I mean, I can see it. I'm going to go up to the spinning, but I'm not going to go into the spinning, basically. Okay. Do I see anything on the end? Um, you can see a door at the far end going north, right about here. Yep. Um, can I tell what this spinning is, what's making it or causing it? Um, what's your, could you send your stone cutting to the chat real quick? I want to know if you have to make a check or what that check is. Okay. Um, history is for the origin of it. Okay. So I guess in this case, it would just be an investigation check, but I'm going to give you advantage for your dwarven stone cutting. All righty. Oh, there it is. 18. 18. As far as you can tell, there is machinery in the stone outside of it, and so probably unreachable, but it is uh, making it rotate. Okay. Uh, Counterclockwise, if that helps. Will I be able to cross that, basically, is what... Um, it's pretty quick. You should be able to with a bit of acrobatics. Mm. But, I mean, you tell me how you want to cross it. You just see the cylinder rotating counterclockwise rapidly. Okay, um, I'm going to try to run across. <laughs> okay. Make an acrobatics check. Yeah. Oh, God, nine. Eight. Oh, oh, yeah, nine. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the D20s. Um, you take one step into the cylinder, and immediately, <laughs> like, it, your feet, you find that the slippery or the surface is apparently covered in oil. Because your feet just <laughs> right out from under you, you land hard on your back, and, like, you try to get up, and it just tumbles you right end over end. You end up, like, three or four times trying to regain your feet and just getting dropped face or back first on it before you finally are able to just, like, crawl back out of it. <laughs> uh, your beard soaked in oil, your front, your back, like, oh, you're no. just dripping in it because you just slid around in it. Oh, look at him. There's, oh. there's no dignity to be had in this. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to quietly chuckle to myself over here. That's funny. If I could, I'd break it. And it doesn't help. Like, the, the black and white spiral pattern in it just served to make you dizzy the whole time, too. Eric, you good down there? I hit you all. <laughs> <laughs> you brought this upon yourself. We didn't make you do that. I'm trying to get ahead here. Well, keep going. All right, I'll try it again. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I'm smart tactically, but I'm not smart mentally, I guess. The difference between intelligence and wisdom. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to try it again, I guess. Should Make I do an another? acrobatics check, yep. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> so this, like, you're rubbing your hands together, like, okay. okay. 17. 17. You got it this time. You take one step forward and then whoosh, feet right out from under you. You land skull first on the the platform, which just kind of rolls you, and you try to get back up to your feet. Your feet slide out from under you. You fall on your back and then just kind of, like, log roll out of the tunnel. <laughs> Is there anything up here on the ceiling above it? Wait, did he make it? No, yes. he did not. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you said he did. Yeah. No, well, I, that was more from his point of view. Like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then... Oh. Okay, I got it. Um, the ceiling is just part of the rotating tunnel. Is there anything, like, sticking out I could tie a rope to? Nothing visible. Okay. Can we see how it's turning, or is that inside the walls? Seems to be inside the walls. Mm -hmm. I have a question, though. Or rather, I should say, it's the walls themselves. Like, the hallway itself is what's rotating. Like one of those funhouse things? Mm-hmm. Yes, what's the question? I could throw a javelin 
and tie a rope to a javelin. The walls and floor are stone. Stilly, mm -hmm. would this affect that? Would, is this like, dip, like, would this give me any kind of benefit? Interesting. Lands stride. Um, non magical, difficult terrain. I would say it would give you advantage on your acrobatics check. Is there any like obvious split between where the wall is spinning and where it's not? Um, no, it looks, I mean, like, there's like a very fine crack, but it's, yeah, like, it's like, lush. yeah, it's very close. Like, it's not airtight, mm -hmm. but it's as close to airtight as it can be without being airtight. And how far across is it? It's about a 30 foot section of hallway <sighs> and 10 feet wide. Eric, do you want to be the one to succeed in this, or do you want to see if other people can succeed? I think Eric can succeed. I yeah. will help him. <laughs> Call upon the great wizard, the vast mind of the ages, and I cast guidance. <laughs> <laughs> the blessing of uh, Yuri is upon you. And now you will walk well. across the stone as if we... We're walking across water earlier. It'll be Wait. fantastic. <laughs> I would like to see. Go ahead, Eric. You have you have a mod on your side. You will do just fine. What do you want me to do? <laughs> try to cross it again. I'll try to cross Believe it. Believe in yourself. That's you what may I add to a do. D four to your acrobatics check. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you s people suck. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I feel like for some of them, this might be therapeutic Thank because of me. things Tap has done. I know. <laughs> you had a you roll a d4 as well. Yeah. You might make it. Oop, wrong one. Oops. They can do this. Square brackets and two of them on each side. Yeah. Oop. Oh, dang it. Square brackets. <laughs> yeah, I'm Don't trying. Hit shift. <laughs> and you had to say 1d4. Oh, there you go. Aha. Ooh. So that's a total of 22? Yep. 22. All right. Apparently her god is not bullshit because you step <laughs> on and immediately, like, your feet start to slide out. And this time, take you take some inspiration from a common creature that you have seen in... Uh, in the north, the penguin. And you <laughs> throw yourself forward, and you kind of slide on your belly right through the tunnel uh, to about here, at which point now you're starting to slow down, and now you're kind of going side to side, just kind of idling a little bit. But you uh, can like Wait wipe your hands off of oil, maybe get your beard for grip, and start like pulling yourself along on the, uh, on the floor, inchworming forward it's not pretty but you make it <laughs> yes and like toward the end you even manage to get up to your feet you're doing it you've got like your hand pressed against the side you're sliding and you make it out the other end of this cylinder aha uh -huh. yes on Praise your feet Kane. he is with you <laughs> is there any way to disable this yes <laughs> we had yeah. the same idea. Can I, can I actually see anything on the side about like a switch or anything? Make a perception check. Of course you'd say that. Can I look for something on my Yeah, hand? I wanna I'll assist him. Oh gosh. You do not see anything of that sort, I'm afraid. Okay, perception said right. Mm-hmm. Oh no, not you guys. I well yeah, I guess I guess it no. would be you guys, yeah. Yeah, looking from our end. Oops, crow is me. <laughs> 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 okay, um, is there any way I can throw, I can tie my rope to the javelin and throw it to him? 
you could throw it to them. There's nothing to stick it in, but yes, you could throw it to them. No, I'm, I'm actually going to tie a javelin, throw it to them, and then, like, tell them to grab the rope, and I'll uh, pull one back one at a time. Eric, don't throw a javelin. Well, I'm not going to throw it at you guys. I'm going to throw it, like, over... Th I can't even make it to you guys, actually. Hang on, let me see. Wait, was there nothing here? I can you make see, it right to the edge of that. You do not see any signs of a way to turn it off. I'm gonna cast this, and you can pass it off to my hand. Well, I was just so a, a spectral skeletal <laughs> hand forms up in the air, and then slowly floats through the uh, cylinder toward you and just kind of wraps its skeletal fingers around your javelin. And if you let go of it, we'll take it. <laughs> Alvin, did you even hear what I said, dude? <laughs> no. I can only make the javelin throw to, like, right here to the edge, so I wasn't going to hit anyone no matter what. Oh, well... It's just... It, it, what if you accidentally hit someone? <laughs> I can't. That's the point. <laughs> okay, never mind. It's, it's fine. All right. We don't know oh, that. The eccentrics it. will be eccentric, I suppose. <laughs> All right. So you said you have rope tied to it? I do, yes. And what are you doing with the other end of the rope? I'm hanging on to it. <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, gonna to pull them one by one. I'm going to do it over and over again and pull them one by one, basically over. Okay. Just one person could hold it until the end. One person should hold it on each side, and then right. it, they can cross easy while they hang mm -hmm. on to the rope. I'm not that smart, so I'm just letting you know. I'm telling you. Yes, you are. No, I know I am, but I'm I'm intelligent, but I'm only battle intelligent. I'm not what? like. Will that give us advantage or maybe like a plus five? I would say with a rope, it would both lower the DC and give you advantage. Okay, I'll go for it. So, it, what are you doing then? Is someone holding it on the yeah, other end? Okay, holding it. I'll I'll hold it. No assist in holding it. I will try to cross. So you're crossing. Who has the javelin in hand? Yeah, I don't. Myself and I guess um... Clara. Sir. Clara. Okay. Clara. Clara. Oh, I have double advantage. Okay, so Elise, go ahead and make an acrobatics check as you start uh, hand over handing along the rope that Eric is holding at the far end. Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> yep. Okay, you don't get very far. Like, your feet start to get pulled out from under you, and you kind of find you're treadmilling pretty hard. And, like, you try to get your footing, and your feet slide on the oil, and it pulls I you right out. And then you're just lying flat on your back, just hanging onto the rope, like, trying to regain well, your feet. Rope. And you can make another acrobatics check. <laughs> I'm going to reach out and touch her oh, and give her... Okay. She Sorry, gets herself it? up onto the rope through sheer <laughs> determination, <laughs> pulls herself up and starts pulling herself along. I don't along. need anyone's help. She does indeed. Are you guys waiting does. until she's all the way across to keep going? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're going one at a time. Elise makes it to Eric. <gasps> I'd like to go next. Okay. Oh, wait. Is this? Can I check if this oil is flammable? Make oh. a perception check. Perception. Why? Okay. Or nature, or survival, whatever you prefer. Uh, nature, survival, nature. Oof. Ah. Uh, I don't know. <coughs> <laughs> Only one way to find out, right? No, don't yeah. do that. Don't, don't. Okay. Well, I'd like to cross. Okay. You start pulling yourself along. Uh, make an acrobatics check. Hey, 19. Okay, so you get to about here when... Everyone roll initiative. Oh. oh, yes, I'm afraid. Oh, this is going to be great. The appropriate. Uh, huh, okay. Billy, I have a question. Yeah. Am I covered in oil? Yeah. Ooh, at least. Is that a problem? Yes. Ow. 
should have just frickin' used my idea to get through this stupid thing. <laughs> okay. Salty. So... Sophia, what is your initiative? 22. Elise? 27. Uh, JJJ? 7.12. Eric. Completely different than tap. Eight. <laughs> Clara. Seven one three. And... Okay. Good job, everyone. So, um. <laughs> Elise, you don't have the alert feet, do you? I do. You do? I do. Okay, well, Elise, you actually get a turn in this surprise round, then, as you hear something peculiar behind you in the wall right here. The yeah. sound of, like, yep. a slat opening. Oh. Close it. And you turn, <laughs> and you can see there's a narrow, like, two-inch arrow slit that has opened up. And mm -hmm. you're like, huh? And looking in, you can just make out the tip of an arrow, which is knocked, and lit on fire. Yep, okay, <laughs> that's what I thought was going to happen. Grab the arrow. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so you have, you alone get to act in the surprise round. What would you like so, to do? <laughs> so when I said, this is oil flammable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What would you like to do, Elise? <laughs> I can see something has knocked the arrow. Uh-huh. And it's not like a uh, machinery kind of thing? No. There's someone back there. A little dick? <laughs> <laughs> can I see far enough in there? Um, Probably not without like to putting your face right up to it. It's so I very can't like, cast a spell in there? No. Okay. Not without the spell sniper feet. I suppose that's fair. Um, don't worry, guys. I'm going to... How big is the hole? About two inches wide and about eight inches tall. Eight inches tall? Mm-hmm. Can I grab Eric's shield? I assume he's not like, it's on his back or something. So Where's here's it? the problem with Eric's shield. It has a spike in the center of it. Okay, I can use the other side of it. I believe, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the shield is on his arm. Which will take an action to take off. Mm hmm I mean, his action, I can't do it. As your action, you could get it off, but you wouldn't be able to do anything with it. You said eight inches tall and two inches across? Mm hmm. It's an arrow slit. Yeah, I know. I'm just. I just. I have to block it up. <laughs> um, can I block it with my quiver? You could certainly try. All I have to do is hold it there, and then he can't shoot in here. There's only that one arrow slit, right? Sure. <laughs> Are there multiple? I'm looking. Make a perception check. Why you gotta be a dick about this? <laughs> there you go. You 25. don't see any other arrow slits. Okay. <laughs> then I will grab one of my many quivers. It would be an action to take the quiver off. Yes, dear. Mm -hmm. An action. <laughs> And I'll just smack it, and I'll, like, just hold it on there. Okay. The chances of... They can't fire through that. I mean, it's... Right? Sure. <laughs> I'm blocking it. So... Yeah. I guess that's that. Actually, I'm sorry. It is not a short... So it's not a sh uh, uh, an arrow. It would be a crossbow that you can see lit in there. Apologies. A crossbow? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So, how am I gonna do this? Oh. I am gonna call it to everybody else. Um. Someone is trying to light this on fire through this arrow slit. <laughs> and on that note. And I'm gonna block it. So Fia does not have alert. Uh, which makes no. it Burkett's turn. Yeah. Now, from Burkett's point of view, there is an oil-soaked quiver stuffed into his arrow slit, correct? It's not oil-soaked. It is oil-soaked. It was in my bag. thought you said you were wearing it. I said I take one of my many quivers. I have four. One is on my back, three are in my bag. Okay. That being the case, you would not be able to stuff it into the arrow slit this turn. You'd have to use the one you're wearing. Are you for real? Yeah, it's an action to get it out of your bag. So you could quickly unsling it and stick it in, but to get it out of the bag would take longer. You could also just straight up try to use your bag. I mean, it's also covered in oil. That is true. So... I'll just stick with the quiver. Okay, so the one that you had on your shoulder? Yeah, it's just shoved okay. in there, so if he shoots it, it's not going to go anywhere. Both hands are on it? Yeah. Okay. I'm holding it in there. Um. Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> on the other side, you hear, Hey, Snarla! Come on! They're ready! And then he is going to shoot anyway. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the DC he has to hit is increased by 10 with your quiver in the way. If he fails by more than 10, it just straight up stops his shot. If it fails by less than 10, you and your quiver catch fire. If Me? He, Why do I catch fire? Because you're holding the quiver and you are also s- drenched in oil. It's only on the one side. Yeah, but the whole thing is covered in oil, and she's go- it's gonna with a not if crossbow not bolt. Oxygen to get to it. a crossbow bolt would fire right into it. Let's let's it's see where the dice lie. Let's see what yeah. happens. Okay. So let me check. I believe it is. It was a DC ten. So now it is a DC twenty. Fourteen. So you get a dexterity saving throw. I do? You do. The You hear a whomph of the crossbow bolt firing into your quiver. 14. Okay. Your quiver is suddenly in flames and you spring back away from it and like get your hands clear as the whole thing just in flames and falls out of the uh, arrow slit. Your arrow's starting to catch and burn on the floor. Um, you can hear cursing on the other side and the sound of a crossbow being reloaded. A heavy crossbow takes an action to reload. Does it? Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eric, <laughs> you do not have anything to do on a surprise round, correct? Yes. Okay. Clara, nothing for surprise round? Nope. JJJ, nothing for surprise round? I have alert. You have alert. Fuck. Yes, sir. Okay. Can I make my way across? Finish making my way across? You can certainly try. Um, so it would be your entire to... turn to get all the way across, or you can try to do it in just your movement with another acrobatics check. <laughs> oh, well, I'll take my entire turn. <laughs> okay. I, I know where my acrobatics is at. So you Here. quickly like pull yourself along. So that's using both my action and movement then, right? Mm-hmm. And bonus action. Okay. So you get to the other side. Uh, Elise, it is your turn. Already? Already. Okay, I'm going to look in that hole. Okay. Can I see in there now? Peer in there. Uh, it is dark on the other side, but you can see sparks of someone l- trying to light another flame. That's nice. Um, can I tell how big a room it is? It's n- not really. No, it's dark. Okay, whatever. I'm going to cast Tidal Wave in there. Mm. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch! Uh, could you oh, put sorry. the spell yeah. text on? Yeah, hold on. 
So just did that to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> Why didn't you do that in the first place? It'll put the flame out. Okay, I panicked. <laughs> I was. I just. I didn't think he would burn it up in one turn. So Elise's eyes narrow to the Batman eye slits, and then she puts her face right up to that arrow slit. You said kind of bitch. pulls away, reaches a hand through, and suddenly there's a sound like a water tower spilling all of its water into the room. You can hear startled squawks of surprise followed by very lupine howls of rage <laughs> and also surprise. Um, oh my god. Drowned, you son of a bitch is drowned. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done it before. I was trying to save my spells. Did not see this one coming. Okay, I well, he failed. Then spritz out. Um, okay. It's 25 bludgeoning damage. And then she... God damn it. We got a five and a four, respectively. Does it fill up the room? It does not. No. But it does drench everything. Uh, or take 15 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh. Extinguishing unprotected flames. Yeah, I got it. And dousing their tinder. Oh, man. And they're both knocked prone. Wow. We just swatter cannon the whole room. Mm -hmm. Hydro pump. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Elise just cast hydro pump. Um, you can hear chaos on the other side. You can't see anything through that arrow slit, but water is suddenly starting to leak out under the door over here. <laughs> we might want to finish taking care of that. And that's it. Sophia. Um... She's, um, uh, Claire is still holding the rope. Yeah. And Eric, you're still holding, or Claire had the javelin. Eric, you're still holding the rope as well? Yes, he said. Okay. But he's muted. Oh. Um, it's only I heard him. Yes, I'm still holding it. Got it. Um, <clears throat> I guess, I guess I'll just have to try and make my way across. Okay, it would take two full turns to do it carefully, or you can try to do it in a single turn with an acrobatics check. I'm going to try an acrobatics it. Right on. 23! 23. 23. Fuck the rope. You ba you run <laughs> in and, like, skateboard slide uh, with perfect balance right through the tunnel, riding the oil so that literally none of you is covered in oil except the very bottoms of your boots as you slide right across with perfect agility. Okay. Woo! You would still have a... Actually, because you can bonus action to dash, you still have your action. Um, there's a door here? There is a door there. Um, can I try to open the door? Sure, make a strength check. That is 18. You're on a roll. Representing Andalon, you uh, slam the door open, and as you do, a surge of water just blasts outward, uh, kind of knocking all three of you sideways a little bit, and then washing into the spinning cylindrical tunnel, and all the oil is getting washed away. Um, I am going to move into the room a little bit. Well, this did not go at all according to plan. Good. Favorite part of being a player. <laughs> mm -hmm. I bet. I bet. That was a nasty little surprise they had set up, too. Not today. Not today. So you rush in. Unfortunately, it probably would have been that's... your action to force nope. that door yep. open. That's, that's what I assumed, so I just was moving in, and that was it. But what you see, now that you're in here, is... Uh, actually, I might have a description of it. Nope, I don't. So you can see what well, looks like a little uh, guard room. Some furniture, some uh, items for pastime. You see standing in the middle of the sopping wet floor a mangy... Well, human... Sized like a human, standing about seven feet tall 
but with the claws and features of a wolf. So like a hybrid human-wolf form. She is drenched, just water dripping off of her, and she is snarling in a very unpleasant fashion. I can tell it's a she. Probably. I, I would say so. Okay. She doesn't have a dick in between her legs. She does not. <laughs> she does not. Uh-oh. Eric will be <laughs> hitting on that, too. Oh, boy. Oh, we'll see about that. <laughs> yep. After Sophia <laughs> is her. Oh, God. She flexes her claws and then sheaths <laughs> them. Wait, 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 wait. This could be perfect. This could actually be perfect. No, it can't. Oh, yes, it can. Is it? Yes? Yes! Okay. She's gonna cast Firebolt. She snarls and says, You'll pay for that! And then hurls a little ball of fire. You're what, opening the door? She's not throwing it at you. Yeah, but we're drenched in water. Yes, you are. Uh, also, the DC goes up by two for Sophia, two for Eric. Is she throwing it I at don't... me? No, she's oh, throwing it at the to. oiled cylinder. No. I thought you said the oil was washed away. It did. The firebolt hits the cylinder and does not catch. And just. Damn it! I oh, thought she was throwing it at something else. No, she was throwing it at the cylinder. She was expecting it to oh, catch. Oh, yeah. I didn't okay. realize that it, yeah. Uh, uh. Back it! Kill them! And she is going to fall back to... She actually, had to use her movement to stand gonna, up. Half she, her movement. Half her movement. And then she's going to move over here. Um... That's it for her turn. Burkett is going to use his movement to get up, grab a couple swords off of a t like a, a dresser, and stagger through the the murky water over here, kind of blinking like, <sighs> Ugh. and he has both a long sword and a short sword, and he's going to move over here to attack Sophia with them. Yeah. Oh, who is that guy? Is that a guy? Mm -hmm. Who is that? Who is that? He makes multi attack. Uh, so he makes two long sword attacks and a short sword attack. Um... He swings the long sword at Sophia. That is a fifteen to hit. Uh, it does hit. Yes. Just a reminder that you do have the defensive duelist feat if you want to use that. But then you also have uncanny dodge, so you'll ha and you have hellish rebuke, so all sorts of reactions. What do you yeah, want? Yeah, I was gonna use um, what was it? Uncanny dodge. I was gonna use uncanny dodge. Okay, to take five damage instead of ten. Keeping yeah. in mind that if you use that, you will not be able to increase your armor class by whatever, or use hellish rebuke this turn. You know what, then, then, yeah, I'll use Defensive Duelist. Okay, so you want to negate the hit entirely. Yeah. Okay, so you dodge and parry, sending his longsword careening away where, from where he meant for it to hit. He snarls and does a backswing coming at you a second time. For a seven to hit. Does not hit. And once again, you kind of leap over his swing, and he nearly impales the wall with the sword, and he... Ah, pulls free and then swings with the other sword, the short sword in his offhand. Jeez. Which is 17 to hit. Which I believe that will hit, but it's only 7 piercing damage. Yeah, that will hit, but yeah, only 7. I'd take 7 because I can't use another reaction. Mm -hmm. So all in all, that could have been a lot worse. But, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I will then, uh, no, I'm going to save it. That's all. That's it. Okay. Eric, it is your turn. 
you're kind of standing in the doorway. You've still got the, the rope. Clara has the javelin in her hands. Um, I'm actually going to drop the rope. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll be here then. Well, no problem. Jacob, you going to grab the rope? No, it's fine. I, it's, it's, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. Go on, Bye. Eric. Hey, don't start. Okay, Man. so what does the Dwarf Fight King do? Well, I'm going to throw the, the rope to Jacob. I don't know if he's going to grab it or not, but I'm going to kind of like do one of those things where I grab it, where I have it, and I'm just going to throw it on and be like, take this. Okay. And um, I'm going to actually move up here. Uh, that Later. will provoke from Burkett, if that's okay with you. That's fine. Okay, and he is going to take that swing with his longsword. It's fine. That's a 13 to hit. Nope, doesn't hit. So he swings and it just ricochets off your shield as you run by, charging straight towards this half-wolf, half-woman. All right, I'm going to look back and be like, you suck, and I'm going to keep <laughs> going. Uh, and I'm going to look at uh, this thing, and I'm going to be like, Hey, we can make some beautiful babies together. My heart is Burkitt's and Burkitt's alone. You can either die or reproduce. Shut up, you hairy little ape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's some little bitch. All right, I'm going to attack it then. Who's <laughs> <Okay>. snorted? Who's <laughs> snorted? <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, I'm going to hit him with, uh, or hit her with my battle axe because she doesn't want to reproduce. Okay. <laughs> Imagine 14. that. Redefining hitting on her. Uh, 14, you're not using reckless? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, so 15. Okay. Well, yeah, 15 15's. hits, but your weapon just ricochets off of her harmlessly. Uh, can I bash her with the shield? Sure. We'll see if that does anything. Right 24. You look at your axe like it betrayed you, snarl, and then come at her with a shield. 24 hits, but it also ricochets off of her. Just clang mm. off. Now, I believe you have extra attack. I do, actually. So you actually get two battle axe attacks if you want, yeah. though you're noticing they don't seem to be very... Yes, they're not very effective. Um... Uh... Yeah, they ain't doing nothing. Can't get it up. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> this thing would kill you in my pants. I'm just letting you know. All right. Um, I'm going to, like, just, like, steady and be ready in case she attacks me. Okay. Clara, you can hear that. You probably don't want to know the details of what you're missing in there, but you can definitely <laughs> hear them. Oh, my. Well, I can guess when it comes to Eric, I'm... Uh... I want to move across here. Can I please do that? So here's a question. Uh, John Jacob Jeremiah, did you take the rope when it was thrown at you, or did you let it go? I let it go. <laughs> oh. That wasn't... <laughs> so mean. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know what was there. All of a sudden it's water, then people yelling about... Okay, what do I... Firebolt. Would you like to try it? You can describe to me the manner in which you want to try it if you want to try it. You did uh, just see how I skillfully crossed it, so you could try to imitate that. No. <laughs> Good. I'll just hang out here. Okay. Good luck, guys. I'm gonna read a book. <laughs> I mean, it's not oily. Anymore, that right? is true. It is no longer oily. Yeah, but now it's oh, it's not oily? It is not oily. It is wet. Yes, but I don't really want to embarrass myself. Okay, here's what I'll do. I will call upon the wisdom of my deity. And cast guidance on myself. And I'll go for the acrobatics check, even though I'm not good at that. Do it. I got 13. Plus a d4. Um, Moment of truth. 
plus four. Plus four. So 17? 17. That was the DC for a wet two mm. instead of an old. Ooh. Uh, you needed a four. So that means oh. that you kind of, okay, put your hands, or put your life in AYK's hands and step out onto the a bot take the wheel? You, I, you know, eyes shut. You don't really know where you're going. You're slipping and sliding and oh, and then you're not. And you made it all the way. Yay. Can I do anything? That was probably move and dash to get all the way across. So that would probably take be an action. It. Well, that action was to dash. The guidance. Uh, oh, yeah. And you cast. Guidance. Oh, yeah. I did do guidance. Okay. So you're already getting a bit of extra getting here. Uh, but you are on the other side of that cylinder. Okay. Here I am. That takes it to JJJ. No, hey, I. What the heck is that thing? Make is a that nature check. Man sized? Yes, they are both human sized. Uh, that right there is a werewolf in its hybrid form. Um, oh. You know that, you know the gist of lycanthropes. I won't bore you with all the details. You do know that they are completely impervious to harm unless it comes from magical means or from a silver weapon. Oh. You also oh. know that their bite can afflict others with lycanthropy, with the curse of lycanthropy. Uh, it's way too crowded in here, but. I would like to use this casting at it, and I would like to whisper at it. Your skin looks fascinating. I'd like... May I have <laughs> it, please? <laughs> Make an intimidate check. I'd like... I'd like to take off your skin. Would you please stand still? Jesus Christ, Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was the that? The one in the corner or the one right by me? In the corner. Okay. And um, this is just being whispered. 16 so can reply back. <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed. Um, I rolled what? a six. Who said that? No! Oh, I, I will kill turn. you all! <laughs> That's my turn. <laughs> um, Elise, it is your turn. Oh! Hmm. This guy, what's his deal? Yeah, you didn't really describe him. So he looks like a mundane human. Um, he is wearing splint armor. He is dual wielding a long sword and a short sword, both of which look a little poorly maintained. Um, you can see on the floor behind him is a heavy crossbow, which he cast aside. He seems very martially adept. He clearly knows what he's doing. But otherwise, he doesn't look overly bright to you. Can I do a check to see if he's charmed? Sure. Hmm. Insight? Um, yeah, that would be an insight, I think. Ten? You have no real reason to believe he's charmed. Okay. Um, am I able to... Well, I can see her, right? You can, so I guess... yes. I think. If you can no, see I... her on your screen. I can, but there's a wall here, so something seems not right. Oh, I know what it is. Everyone sees as Eric sees. That's what it is. I wonder I why don't. I could talk as him. I can too, for some reason. I'll move right here. Am I in range of him right here? This guy? I'm not right. Moving through the door, you would have to move into his range and then out of it. But he okay, already I used don't... his reaction this turn, so. Oh, he did? Okay. Is this like a bench? Can I just. It's a dresser. Can I shove past it? Um. Make an acrobatics check, otherwise you're going to kind of crash into it. Just, and... and I just want to, like, push it out of the way. I don't want to... Okay, make like, a literally... make an athletics check instead, then. Uh, 
I don't want this to be my action, though. It's not. Okay, yeah, you shove past it. Oh, get out of the way. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You were correct. That is a bench. So you could also just, like, hop up onto it and then run past them. Nah, kick it aside. Okay. I don't got time for jumping. <laughs> and I will cast a uh, frostbite on her. Okay. I assume it's a her. Mm -hmm. You said that. Mm -hmm. Frostbite. <laughs> she gets Fail. a natural one to resist. So she takes yeah. six points of cold damage. I have to do this for everything. And. Y yes, you do. There you go. On a failed save, and has disadvantage on her next attack roll. Correct. Next weapon attack roll. Right. Well, her claws count as weapons. They do, and as does her bite. Uh, okay. After Elise is Sophia. Ah, that's as me. As you, you see a, a line of ice forming on this werewolf woman. Ha, <laughs> they've got her. I've got a guy right in front of me. I'm concerned more about that. So I'm going to smack him in the face. Or at least try. Whoop. That is a... Fuck, that's a 13 to hit. 13 does not hit him. Uh, mm -hmm. You try, and he, with his own weapon, like, forms a cross with his two swords and catches your rapier and pushes it aside. That sucks. Um, you do have a bonus action. Yeah. I'm gonna try and hit him again. Wait. I was like, wait, I, that's not. So don't add the. That's you, you can't. You you have to dual wield to get a bonus action as a rogue. Oh. Okay. Then I go that. So you could draw yeah. your dagger and try to stab with that if you'd like. We have inspiration. No, you don't. Yeah, we do. No, you the don't. Light bot was beaten. What? Oh, you're right. You're right. Someone in the party has inspiration. You guys can pick right now who gets the inspiration. For what? Uh, every time our stream boss gets beaten, someone in the party gets inspiration, unless oh. everybody already has it. Interesting. Yeah. Who wants it? Got it. Okay, I'm taking it. Okay. You had Take your chance. <laughs> um... So if you want, you could draw your dagger and try to attack him with that, or you could use your bonus action to like disengage or something like that. Um, no, no, no. I'll just stay right here. Right there. I'll just. Yep. Okay. So the two of you are kind of locked in solo combat at this point. Um, he seems intent upon you. Snarla, however, is more interested in. Starla? Ah, yes. Yes, it is. It's beautiful. Isn't it? Oh, boy. I thought he was charmed, but I have a feeling, if anything, she's the charmed one. Okay. She is going to... Her eyes flick down and see Eric's armor. She grins wickedly. Her claw begins to crackle with lightning and she reaches out for you. So she has advantage and disadvantage, which just comes to a regular roll. Why does she have bless? What the hell? Fuck. Why is she... Why does it say she's got... Ignore that plus four. I don't know what the fuck is going on with that, but that's a thing. Um, yeah, she, she's, she's got bless, bless on her. So it would be 13 to hit you. Nope. That frostbite it saved your butt, because that would have been advantage. <laughs> so she lunges for you with that lightning blast, and like the ice around her arm locks in, and she kind of swings and misses and starts swinging her arm around, cracking the ice locked on it, freeing herself. And she is going to move over here around I'm gonna you to I'm gonna yell to her I'll be like we could make beautiful babies <laughs> I'll make you dead to make a beautiful meal you can't even kill me Burkett stop playing with your food Snarla I don't like it 
And he's gonna attack Sophia. Actually, first he's gonna maneuver around, and then he's gonna do one long sword to Sophia, one long sword to Elise. Hmm. So Sophia, that is a natural one. Sweet. Elise, that is an eight. Uh, <laughs> this is going great. And then the short sword is for Sophia. <laughs> 20 to hit for 7 damage. Good uh, old... Tri uh, so, you do have your reaction back. Did you want to use it? Um... Yes. But I'm gonna use it to cash... Wait, how much did I do? 7? Yeah, I'm just gonna use it to cast Tellish Rebuke. Oh no! Uh, mm. okay. Go ahead and cast that. Okay. So that is a DC 15 dexterity save. 16. Unless he does take half. Technically, Ashley has the option to use her inspiration if she wants to make him re-roll that. That's up to you if you want to use it or not. No. Or actually, I would also remind someone has a pair of D20 rolls that will be going to waste at the end of this encounter. Duh, I forgot that. I saw this happening, and... What did he roll instead of a 15? He rolled a 7 instead. From the back, John Jacob Jeremiah's eyes flash as a moment that he had predicted comes to be, and miraculously, he rolled a 7 instead of a 15. <laughs> and... He failed his dexterity saving throw and takes 13 fire damage. Sweet! As he stabs you, there's a little ting. Boom! He explodes in flame that blasts him away from you. Flat on his butt for a moment. He quickly picks himself up, but he's just charred and blackened and coughing. <coughs> what the hell was that? That's what you get for hitting me. Ah! Eric, it is your turn. Uh, I'm actually going to move down here. And I'm going to try to hit that bad boy. Are you staying adjacent to her, or are you, are you trying to get away yes, from her? Yes, yes. Okay. No, I'm, I'm trying to stay, like, okay. in between, kind of. I gotcha. I gotcha. I just wasn't sure if you were getting away from her or not. Okay. No, no. So you circle around and then come at Burkett. Go ahead. Let's see what you got. Uh, let's see what we got here. 26. <laughs> that will hit for eight points of damage. You bury your axe into the back of his knee. He hollers and drops to one knee. You get a second battle axe attack and a shield. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do the battle axe attack right now. <laughs> That'll also hit. For, Jesus Christ, 13 mm -hmm. points of damage. Once again, you put the axe like into his lower back, and he... Oh, uh, Snarla, I need a bit of help. You have your shield. Bam. Bam! Bam! Right upside the head, the spike grazes his scalp, leaving a line of blood. He is alive, but he is badly hurt. There you guys go. <laughs> Clara. Okay, okay. Here I come. I'm coming right here. I come up behind Eric. And I put a hand on his shoulder. I say, Sutter the Wise, please. Bless this man and help him get it up. <laughs> and then I cast magic weapon on him give him a magical weapon <laughs> oh my goodness on his, i touch his axe his battle axe <laughs> a caster okay okay and so it should turn that into a magic weapon and give him a plus one on attack and damage rolls it does indeed your did you say his axe his axe, yeah. Your axe begins to glow with arcane light. JJJ. I'm gonna peek out the door. 
I would like your skin, please, and I'll be casting Phantasm Force, where it looks like <laughs> a bunch of scapels just come out of my robes and fly at it, slowly starting to cut into the skin. <coughs> okay, so it gets an immediate intelligence saving throw. Yes, sir. Alvin. That would be a nine. Mm -hmm. She's a fucking wizard. What What the fuck is even the point? <laughs> okay. It takes six psychic damage. But it's no! just, like, silver scapels are cutting into it. My one weakness! She takes six <laughs> psychic damage. Oh. Man, that changes her next turn. Elise. Oh. How's she looking? Fine. Yeah. Hell of a lot better than Burkett. Does she seem to be charmed? Can I do an insight check? Can I get an insight check? What the hell is with this weird relationship they got? <laughs> Maybe they just you love each other. I have no real reason to believe she's charmed. I don't believe in love. That is nonsense. Oh, I've told you many times, Elise. A love is that love is rule. real. Real. <laughs> That is bullshit. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm gonna... I don't want to hit the rest of the party, so I'll just frostbite again. Her. Her? Yeah. Okay. What is with my freaking dice rolls today? <laughs> I cannot roll to save my <laughs> life. Seven... Yeah, this is payback for the Pathfinder payback. thing. That's right. Uh... She takes seven cold damage and has disadvantage on her next attack roll with a weapon or a claw. That's it. Well, I'll move a little. Okay, then. I just realized that that magic weapon thing was a bonus action. Mm -hmm. uh. You can take your action. It's okay. Go ahead. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm going to cast poison spray at her. <laughs> and... No, it's a cantrip. Oh, is it? Yep, poison yeah. spray's a cantrip. Oh yeah, damn Pathfinder. She's just hitting him with the can. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Eleven. Okay, so she's taking twenty goddamn points of poison damage. Wow! Holy wow. shit! Damn. Your uh, your cantrips are uh, pretty good. Oh. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, you blast, like, out of your mace, just a, a spritz of poison, and she's suddenly <coughs> coughing up blood, and, like, blood is running down her eyes like tears. Um, Sophia, I guess. No, no. Yeah, yeah, Sophia, it is your turn. Though, Elise, you're moving away from him. That will provoke. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I would not move if I would provoke. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't even see him there. Then yes, Sophia. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna try and attack him again. So I was gonna say, you don't get sneak attack, but then it hit me, oh no, rogues regularly get sneak attack just by having yeah. allies. So. Yeah. <laughs> All the sneak attack. If it hits, it didn't. So. That does not hit. So you try, it. and the one person he does seem able to parry is you. Damn it. He's gonna parry you. Uh, Shoving would be, like, an action, right? Correct. Yep, that'd be an attack action. Damn it. I'm just gonna stay here with him, then. Did you want to draw your dagger and try with that? Yeah, I might as fucking well. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. Natural one. Today. Okay. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. A uh, lot of nope. <laughs> can't hit this guy. That's as, about as much nope as you can get. Uh, Snarla is up. So, originally, I was going to dispel magic that axe, but we got bigger problems. Thanks, Alvin. Oh, uh, I would very sad. I would have counterspelled you. She is going to cast... Hmm. Perfect. It will hit everyone, including Burkett. <laughs> but she is in a panic. She is straight up panicking. No! No, stay away from me! And tries to blast all of the scalpels around her 
with a thunder wave. Yeah. <coughs> Which is going to. That um, is a constitution save that everyone, including Burkett, has to make. Oh, that oh, twitter! Oh, I failed. I rolled a natural one. Okay. 21. So Elise, John, Jacob, Jeremiah, and Clara, you all take eight thunder damage and are blown ten feet away from her. There's, I'd and be blasted eight. against the wall. So you just get knocked prone, we'll say. You slam into the wall and hit the floor. And I need to make a concentration I have the check. wall or no? Um, where are you? Did I go back here? I would say you Wait, probably just get blasted back here. Wait, I saw this okay. happening. I actually rolled a nine for my concentration check. So for that would total. be a total of 11. Oh, okay. You did see this happening. And just <laughs> before the moment, you closed your eyes and willed yourself to focus a little harder so that when you were blasted back against the wall, Boom, you hit it hard. You took eight damage. Oh, and everybody who succeeded still takes four damage. Dang it. But you are okay. And Burkett is also okay. Which means, I believe, that she's about to take some psychic damage, correct? If it's my turn, yes. Oh, that's on your turn, not hers. Okay. Yep. Well, she is going to turn and flee, which will provoke from Eric as she shoves this door open. Wait, stop. I want that skin. <laughs> you just take your opportunity attack. Uh, well, it I mean, wouldn't do anything. not going to do anything. He's got a yeah, magic will. axe. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't I cast that on you? Wait, I got a magic axe? Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> yes, you have a magic axe. So we get her. That's how you know it's getting late. Oh, okay, yeah. Ten does not hit, I'm afraid. Oh, it didn't do anything. Eleven? Eleven? Plus. Why would it be an eleven? It yeah, is an eleven one. because of magic weapon, and eleven does hit. Yes. <laughs> Guess what her armor yeah, class right. is. For twelve slashing damage. You do twelve slashing damage. You embed the axe, and this time it goes right through her, and she screams in pain and surprise and runs into this room and then leaps out of the way, out of sight. Huh. Though, in her mind, this fleet of silver scalpels just follows after her. I'm oddly reminded of Lem with your stupid rocks. Uh, is she actually uh, dripping blood? Oh, absolutely. So we can follow the blood trail, right? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Burkett. Snarla, no! He is going to... He's going to disengage to run over here. He's going to shut the door and plant himself in front of it. He's stupid. So brave. Their love is real. <laughs> Eric, it is your turn. All right, well, I'm going to actually move to him. You're going to have to go through me if you want her, he says, limping, bleeding out of every orifice, barely standing. Ooh. Well, I'm going to say... So touching. <laughs> That's very nice, but she will have my babies. <laughs> so freaking weird, man. You guys are weird. Anyways, <laughs> You're putting it on us. <laughs> yeah, because you guys freaking put this thing to me. Anyways, um, you can take gonna, that up with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> I'm gonna battle axe him. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fifteen, oh, 15. does not hit him. Ooh. Okay. I'm he parries try him again. Come on, hit him for me. Seventeen. Oh, Seventeen. Seventeen hits. Thank you. And you cut him down with a single <laughs> right into his heart. He dies pretty much instantly. Dang. And you wrench the axe out, and he just collapses on the floor. Weird that the last um, thing oh no! that... What the heck? I deleted oh. the wrong token. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Control Z. Eric, no. There you go. Um, <laughs> Rest in peace. 
would that be the i can still technically move but would it be any more to open the door right there i how i treat it is normally it uses an extra five feet of movement to open a door however because these doors get stuck and require a strength check to open if you don't have supernatural strength you would have to use an action to open it mm. so i can't open the door basically not this turn okay i guess i'm done okay Though technically, you could try to attack the door to just straight up break it down. You do have one attack with your shield. You if you can't like. tell me that after the fact. Come on. Is <laughs> that right, a thing yeah. you want to try? Heck yeah, I do. Come on. Okay. Make yeah, an attack you with your shield. You can't flirt with me. Oh, 25. So screaming like a little hairy ball of fury... The dwarf viking throws himself at the door, shield first, his spike punches right through it, and he takes the door down, like landing on it. Uh -huh. The floor pushes his spike up out of the shield with him just standing on the door. Okay, let's not start with the little thing. Okay, let's leave the little out of it. That's kind of like Jersey, isn't it? But whatever. <laughs> I'll take it. Either way. All right, I'm going to look at her and be like, Let's have some babies. You see a large hair-covered bed. The blankets look really dirty. Um, and you can see a chest in the room. It looks like this was their sleeping quarters. Uh, I killed your man. Now I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> Back it now! Clara. Jeez, okay. Are these five feet... 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, thirty, thirty. Okay, um, well, I can't really make a rage spell attack since Eric is in the way. I mean, it would just be plus two to her armor class. I don't like that. I want you to roll. So, poison spray. Oh no! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make it this time. You'll see. <laughs> mm. See? See? Hey, 18. Hey. She made it. And you aren't gonna take half damage either, so. Yep. So this time she looks away and pssst, you spray it in her face and nothing happens. Whoops! Um, JJJ, it's your turn. Well. I'm gonna have the scapples keep attacking since apparently this thing doesn't really have a range that ends if I lose sight of them. That is correct. So five points of psychic damage as it thinks the scapples are slicing into its skin. No, 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 not like this, Birkin! And she falls to the ground, dead. Which is bizarre to Eric and Clara because you literally just watched her flailing around and then seemingly have like an aneurysm as she collapses to the floor, blood just running out of her nostrils. She's silly, isn't she? <laughs> oh. The good news is her fur is otherwise unharmed. Except for the big slash. Except from... for one big slash. The bad news is she contorts and writhes on the floor, spasming repeatedly as she shifts into the form of a tall, gangly uh, woman in tattered robes. Woman? Mm. Does this happen before I make it to the door? Because I basically. I would say it's in the door. process of happening as you make it to the door. Oh, how sad. That's not what I wanted. Time to loot! And then I searched his chest. <sighs> you guys. So, <laughs> in the chest, um, you find her spell book. That's what I was oh. going to look for. What spells ah. are on it? You want to flip it open? No. Okay. Um, make a dexterity saving throw. As you flip it open, you catch sight of a rune that immediately begins to glow. I just close that right up. 
that just close it right off? Uh -huh. that, uh, this is why I give my all the loot to you. If Rintaro is in the chat, he'll be really excited that I'll that I'm about to say I prepared say explosive seven? runes today. Seventeen. Seventeen. You managed to leap back, though. Who else is in the room? I am. Everyone Not except me. Sophia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I need everyone except for Sophia to make that dexterity saving throw. Why do I? Why oh. did you not put counter spell on this spell list, sir? It was my little joke. Silly. Ugh. Has, uh, I have alert. Would you allow me to cast a spell? Beach has danger sense. Yeah. No. Do, so actually, danger yeah. sense gives you advantage. Uh, no. That oh. unfortunately I can't. That's not really how alert works. Yeah. I am sorry. That's for sneak attacks. Okay. 15. Clara, you make it. 11, even with advantage, unfortunately. Eric, <laughs> you did not get out of the way quickly enough. Um, mm -hmm. The spell book is completely destroyed, engulfed in flames. Eric, you take 20 points of fire damage. Everyone else, you take 10, unless you have evasion. Oh Am I able to get out of the room in time, or no? No. Okay, 10 oh, points of damage. Damn it. I wanted to answer a question, and I got excited, and now I won't have an answer. The spell book is no more. I hate all you. However, otherwise, there is still a perfectly good large candlestick that looks like it's worth about 10 gold. <laughs> At least I'm very disappointed in you. That is mine. Are there <laughs> ashes there of the spell book? <laughs> yes. Yes, there, like there's a few loose, tattered pages. Like you pick up one and it just disintegrates. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show her my book. Would you like to open mine next? <laughs> I'll take his book from him. Would you like to open mine? And I give him the skin book. Oh my god. Who? Me? Yeah, you. I'll take that book too. You can just look at it. I'll look at it's, it. It's a journal filled with like an anatomy sketches. Tim, is this like a dresser? Notes on yes. like whose skin might be better. Can I? Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Those part. are those are benches. The dresser is in the room that they're gathered in. I was okay. wrong. In this room, is there the... are two benches and a table. The table has some cards. Nothing over here other than the slit. Mm -mm, just the slit and the heavy crossbow still lying on the ground. Who you have has the <clears> best skin <throat> in our group? My book. Probably. Oh. Me. It's the most human skin. I don't want to be that guy, but wasn't Eric covered in oil? Yes. Oh. Yep. No, he got washed. Got water all over him. Did he? You yep. said when the door opened, all the water came out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you did, it yeah. Washed us away. It was Tell you what, to make us go I would away. say it washed some off of you. Why don't you make a dexterity saving, a second dexterity saving throw, again with advantage. If you fail this one, you'll catch on fire. Otherwise, enough of the oil was washed off of you that you were otherwise fine. You know what, silly? You better hope I don't come back to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write this adventure. <laughs> I know. All right, I'll make one. All right, I'm just the one enjoying it. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Oh, Saved by danger sense. Okay, so you had the sense to get your shield up and kind of Captain America as it blew you across the room. Unfortunately, that doesn't really work with a wooden shield, but it did keep you from catching on fire. Okay. So you guys have found their quarters. You, you've thoroughly ransacked it and found... Uh, it looks like Snarla had a couple different sets of clothes. Um, they were all kind of smelly. This is not what we're looking for. Yeah, I'm sick of this place. I want to leave. We need to look for the Loading stones. Books, kind of. Shit. Oh, can I tell if there's a switch anything over in like, you know, like this area or like over here that would like stop the cylinder? Make an investigation check. Okay. <clears throat> hey, can I have my skin book back? Are you done looking at it? Oh. It is a five. No. Oof. <laughs> Um, you don't find any signs of an off switch. Cool, so we gotta get back across that. The good news is it's no longer covered in oil. <coughs> which, as we established earlier, lowered the DC from 20 to 17. 
who is this lady in your journal? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the book is filled with cover to cover with abyssal, but there's just doodles in the margins. Hmm. Of really bad doodles. But I cannot read this, so take this back. Oh, hey, okay. Um, can I ask you a question? Stones. Okay, w one at a time. One at a time. Alvin, I heard uh, you first. What was your question, Alvin? No. Um, have I ever seen these stones before? Um. You mean the spring stones? Mm-hmm. Make a history check. <clears throat> Like personally, ever seen it? Mm -hmm. That's what it. That's uh, yes, this I... will determine that I think. <laughs> yes, yes, you have. Um, wherever you were raised in Kepri had their own spring stones. So the silly outsider story about the spring stones, and mind you, this is just rumors and gossip. But the story is that the Keprians require the spring stones in order to breed, and that once a year. They gather for a breeding ritual uh, in the early spring, um, and these these spring stones are supposed to be like magic eggs or something that like give Caprians fertility. It's totally a silly story, totally silly. Okay. A big question. Do you like the drawing of the lady that I did? I worked really hard on it. Oh. Um. Yes. Like, it like is... really, it, it took like two hours to do that. Yes, the this, this shading is, is, <laughs> is very... Um, it's very good, especially... Oh, um... really? You like it? Yeah. Okay, I'll draw you next. It'll be great. Yeah, sounds, that sounds really good, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not even gonna insight check it, I believe you. <laughs> that sounds lovely. I wanna cross the cylinder. Yeah, me too, <laughs> actually. Dang it. So, actually, I wanna give you guys the option, because I know it's getting late. Um, <clears throat> do you wanna do one more encounter area? and try to maybe get your hands on one of the spring stones, or do you want to call it here and pick this up next Saturday? My vote is to call it. Gotta go to bed, I have work tomorrow. I kind of had an inkling. Okay, so instead of crossing the cylinder, we're gonna, why don't we say that you guys take a short rest here? Does that work for you? Oh, sure. So you take a sure. short rest right here in this these nice, cozy, balmy quarters. Never forget how smell. balmy and, it does smell a little bit. It doesn't smell at all. No, it doesn't. Um, as you guys settle in, patch up some of the minor injuries you've sustained, clean up the ashes of that former spell book, uh, on them. we are going to leave it there for tonight. Uh, the good news is you guys are about a third of the way through, even though you didn't actually get one of the three, <laughs> no, you didn't get one of the three spring stones yet, but, uh, you did good considering you also had the travel time to encounter and the exposition. So uh, yeah, welcome to White Plume Mountain. <laughs>